us. Can you hear us? Can you okay, over? Me, we are sinking. We are sink. Hello. This is the German Coast Guard. We are sinking. We're sinking. What are you thinking about? Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. It's me, Legal Vices. Whoever you're with, whatever you're doing, however many times you're doing it, however good it feels, whatever you're doing in the first place, whatever, I'm just glad you're doing it here with me on Legal Vices because that's me. Uh, that's my silly little channel and because it has a creative name. But today is Maritime Monday, folks. We've got a, a bit of a thing. I started getting into this. And I realized that, holy crap, there's no way I'm getting through all Because I thought this would be a really short Maritime Monday stream because it's not a very well-known incident we're talking about today. But the more I got into it, the deeper and deeper things sort of opened up. It's like you see a little cave opening. Oh, this is a tiny little cave. And you open it and suddenly you're in like mammoth caves or something. You're like, holy crap, there's more here than I knew. So we've today is part one. There's definitely going to be a part two. And there might be a part three, depending how much we get through. Wrong hat, Jeff. No, it's not. There's never a wrong hat. Um, so what we're going to be doing here, I'm so happy that nobody said muted, muted. Now, if you say it, I'm not going to believe it. So, Hey, Flux, what's up? Uh, right. So I was late for reasons. Uh, we'll get, we'll get to those reasons in just a wee little bit. Uh, oh, well, there you go. That just ruined everything. Uh, Hey everybody. <laughs> uh, Pretend you didn't see that. Uh, we're just kind of hanging out here doing our maritime Monday thing. And there's a lot of ground to cover. And uh, yeah, there you go. Uh, surprise, everybody. Today, we're going to be talking about the uh, the HMS wager. This is the HMS wager. And uh, this, is, this is the <laughs> ship we're going to be talking about. And of course, you weren't supposed to see the super special guest, Danny on, but you did anyway, because she stuck her noggin in, in the stream there. I was too excited. You were hiding me, and I was excited. What am I going to do? Scooch on up. Okay. All right. So, and scooch on over. And over. There. A little more over. All right. I'm over. And this is us. Uh, this is and us. just in case you're wondering, Mr. On, who shall forever remain faceless, is over here monitoring the situation, uh, keeping an eye on you, degenerate Chad. But Danny's here with me at Casa del Larax. And it is the best casa I have ever been to in my entire life. We have been treated to whiskey. We have been treated to cigars. We've been treated to to fried chicken. And more than that, you guys, if you come here to Korea, you will have the best experience of your life. I can't guarantee that Jeff will give you the best experience of your life, but I can guarantee you that he has given us the best experience of our life. And I am so excited to share it here with Jeff, with you today, talking about this. What Now, now remind me, what is the name of this it's, sunken ship? It's the HMS Wager. The HMS Wager. So place your bets tonight. This will be a blast. And when I say tonight, I mean today, but tonight, here in Korea is your future, and your future is looking bright from our end. So cheers, everyone. Make this woman a drink, corn but Can't you tell she's already had a couple? <laughs> I already have had a couple. As a matter of fact, Jeff has made me the best South Side I have ever had in my entire life. Ever. Like, yeah. Jeff is phenomenal. We went around. We walked around. What is that beach called? Gwanganli Beach. We went to Gwanganli Beach, and the beers were like, eh, subpar. Jeff was like, no, let me take you to some real shit. So he went to take us to some real shit. It was closed. I said, Jeff, just take us to your home. And voila, we are in the deep abode of Jeff. And we are so grateful to be here. Amazing cigars, amazing alcohol. So such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Jeff. Yeah. And uh, da Danny, give Yoda a big hug for being cute as doggo. She's been she's been all over Strawberry and Yoda. And they, they've just been... They've been, I, I love when people come over to visit because like Danny and Mr. On here, the dogs have been paying attention to them and leaving me alone has no, been awesome. No, no, no. Those dogs have been all over me yeah. and Mr. On. That's what Those I just dogs, said. No, you said I've been all over them. They've been all over oh, us. Thing. Like yeah. they are so, so cute. So, so cuddly. Love these dogs. Love oh, Jeff. Dan Jeff's the best. Dan Danny's so sweet. Yeah, she's okay. Uh, she's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's Okay. Mr. Mr. On is totally dead cold sober. He's, he's, he's I mean, very sober. But uh, we we did share it. We did share a wonderful cigar together. We we, we had cigars while Danny watched and it was delightful. Drank, ate some chicken. I got to whatnot. enjoy that. That yeah. was really a delight. Hey, and Flex, by the way, I got to see your painting here. It is amazing. Yeah. I was so impressed. <laughs> I, I was being sarcastic, <laughs> kind of. Uh, but no, Where are saying, you? Danny's not wearing a hat. That but well, Danny's been wearing a Wait, hat. Wait, don't fuck me in my hat. But don't get in the frame, because no, otherwise you'll appear. Yeah. Oh, you almost left my hat to Dargy and Yoda. All there right. You go. So she's got a hat. I got a hat. It matches. There we go. 
And yeah. hey, hey, Ron, who's been a member for, member for 12 months. There's my membership anniversary, and I'm graced with a bonus of Lafrodite's presence. Yes, you are. Uh, I don't care about the whiskey, cigars, or the food. I just want to pet the doggos. Ah, Mexican Vader, you're so sweet. But uh, before we get going here, it's time to, because Danny's here, it's uh, we're, we're pouring a very special bourbon from Sugar House Distillery in downtown Salt Lake City. An amazing bourbon. And if you ever happen to be out west, particularly in Utah, check out Sugar House Bourbon. This is this is a great bourbon that is uh, uh, 46%, 92 proof. A great thing. There's a little bit for, for Danny. Uh, we got Thank you, Mr. On's got his beer. Uh, he, well, I'm drinking Mr. On's beer, but Mr. On can have his beer back if Mr. Mr. On wants. <laughs> no, he needs a minute. <laughs> he needs a minute. We had, so we went to this like raw seafood place. What is it called? Peiji, yeah. which is like sashimi. Anyway, they bring out like 10 courses of, of sushi. And with that, we both had like two bottles of soju before we came to Jeff's house. So he's got, he, Mr. On is, Mr. On is good. Good for now. Yeah, did Danny gets to see Danny on gets to see the Larax layer. Lol. <laughs> it's very layerish. Actually, it's gorgeous. It overlooks all of Busan. I am just so delighted to be RL here. RL did the Mighty Five in Utah back in 2016. Utah oh, nice. is a it is a beautiful state. It is. Cheers, Danny. <laughs> We're gonna talk about horrible things today. Ooh. Hmm. That's so good. Ooh, that has a good kick. It's like a little leather back. It is like lots of molasses and brown sugar and mm. not mad. <laughs> so, not disappointed. The soju roars, yeah. <laughs> yeah, soju roars. The soju roars. Uh, McAllen just sold for like two million. Is that the hundred? Is that like the hundred and whatever year old bottle? It is. That one keeps making the rounds. They keep selling it. Uh, it's like a hundred year old bottle. Um, right. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. Oh yes, it, it is the long racks and lovely Aphrodite. So if peeps, um, we'll have like. The trifecta going on here. If we if we unleash the doggo cam, we'll we'll have uh, the the doggo cam over here on the floor. Uh, so when that happens, it happens. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen because these are uh, these are usually our second lowest streams of the week. This is just the chill stream where the true believers, all two hundred and thirty six of you, have come for Maritime Monday, and we surprise you with a Danny on direct right here next to me. So cool. I'm surprised to be here with you. You know, can I tell you guys? This is such a dream to come here because ever since I met Jeff year a year ago, I was gonna say years ago. A year it's ago. Been ago, it's been years ago. It's been more than one. <laughs> since I met Jeff, I kept saying, Oh my gosh, I need to come to Busan and I need yeah. to meet Jeff. And yet here we are, and it there is such go. a delight. And guess what? I was on a boat today. And on a all I could think about boat, yo. was on a boat, and all I could think <laughs> about was Jeff. And I'm so excited that we're here now with you guys all. So let's talk about this no wager. And she and she survived. She survived the boat. We, I survived. It's, the it's boat. not a Danny on direct maritime Monday story. It's a <laughs> <laughs> thank God, because I'll tell you what, this boat was a little iffy. It wasn't iffy. The safety standards. It was the one that went out to Odiokdo and that. Yeah, area. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah well, yeah. You, you actually are pretty lucky to be. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> So, all right. Like I said, this is a this is a long thing. There's no videos because there's not really a video about this particular incident. I, you, you, you get to see my little my little microphone here today because we're way zoomed out. Because I've never had a I've never had another person on camera with me, so it's like really weird because she's sitting over here, but it looks like she's over here Jeff, on I'm the camera. First. <laughs> I'm your first guest it's at your house. I'm your first it's guest at your house. It's, it's a joke. Oh, it's no, a it's, joke. Yeah, anyway. This is why I shouldn't uh, drink. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's continue. Right. So Danny's going to be here providing the uh, oohs and ahs to the story. Like I said, there's no video. We, we usually do that. Oh, Patrick, Patrick Hempkin, no cannibalism on today's boat. Not on Danny's, but on on, on that the wager. There's plenty of cannibalism to go around on the, the story we're talking about today. Because uh, I know how much you guys like cannibalism. Uh, so <laughs> hey, it's, you know, it's what's for it's what's for dinner, um, people. <laughs> so, it's, there's there's no I, I cause, you know I like to cheat and have other people tell the story because they usually put a lot of serious research into it and they boil it down and I watch the videos and we comment. Did we provide the additional commentary to the video? But there really isn't any video for the HMS wager. Yes, yes, I am. I am, in fact, I do, in fact, Tilly have to wear pants. He does wear pants. Yeah, <laughs> when we I, are here, yeah. he is in prison. <laughs> I, I, I am in prison. And, and see, that's the interesting thing. One of the people on the HMS wager 
said that prison is preferable to being on a boat because by being on a ship is like being in prison, but you can drown. <laughs> so that's actually a very astute I mean, comment. I mean, it is an astute comment to me. I was going to say, is it like being in prison, but except seasickness? But no, that's, yeah. that's far. <laughs> Smarter note. What do you mean I have? Oh, oh, the wrong hat is my Maritime Monday hat. Oh, shit. You're absolutely right. Do you want to go take your I, hat? I have to. the chat? Please do. Okay, uh, wonderful. Yeah, I couldn't figure out what you meant by I had the wrong hat. because But I just, I just realized that, A, there's alcohol. There's been alcohol involved in the last four and a half hours of the evening. And I just grabbed the nearest one that would... Uh, it would stop the reflection from happening. So okay. we'll, we'll let Danny take over here and I'll be right back with the proper hat. All right. Excellent, everybody. It's so wonderful to see you here today. Now, he is going to go switch his hat while he does that. Let me tell you how amazing Korea is. No, just kidding. Uh, what did I drink? What have I drank uh, since being here? I have drank soju. I started with two bottles of soju and then I came here to Jeff's house and he made me the best South Side I have ever had in my entire life foam included. Um, let's see what else. Uh, I also had wine. No, I haven't had wine. I take that back. I had some kind of girly drink that included a lot of sugar and a lot of water, but I will let Jeff take over now. Oh, no. So sorry, everyone. Well, then you had the, you had the glass of red water and I had the, the glass water, of purple water and the purple rain, yeah. <laughs> which was literally just purple, purple rain. rain. Exactly. <laughs> it was it was a shame. It, it was it was aptly named. Yeah, it, it's correct. <laughs> and now I've got the right hat on it. And actually, thank you for everyone that was trying to convince me I had the wrong hat on. But I'm like, a wizard never has the wrong hat on. The wizard has exactly the hat he's meant to have on. But then I realized, oh, it's not the Maritime Monday hat. And this is actually an integral part of the story. This ye olde hat here is. Excuse me, the dog the is dogs. licking my toes. <laughs> the dogs are very loud. <laughs> uh, yeah, see see how much louder the dogs are here? That's why I'm always like, oh my God, can you guys hear this yet? I'm really impressed. Yeah. Uh, all right. <clears throat> right, as I said, uh, let's throw this back up again. This is the only audio visual thing we're going to have throughout the day. This is uh, an artist rendition of the HMS Wager. It's a big boat. Judging by the way the sails are torn and it's listing to the side. I'm guessing, and there's a giant rock over here. I'm guessing this is an artist rendition of the accident just before it happened. Hey. So uh, we're going to talk about the horrible things that happened on this ship. Oh, uh, David Nelson, member for nine months, says we need a boop from Danny. Oh, well, I don't have a boop stick, but let me go ahead and boop you anyway. Uh, hold on. Let me find a boop stick. <laughs> this is your boop stick. May your travels be light. May they be less tiresome, and may you always enjoy the best of company. Boop. There we go. Thank you very much. Nicholas Starov says, I thought you'd be covering today's Melly Motions hearing. Is this Melly Monday or is it Maritime Monday, it's Nicholas? Maritime Monday, bitches! Tuesday, tomorrow, we're going to be talking YNW Melly because that's what we do on Tuesdays. Uh, Tuesday will be Melly time. Da -na 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 -na. Can't touch this. Melly time. Uh, oh, we already did that. I'm sorry. Well, you know. You know what I mean. Not really You're not sorry. sorry. No, I'm not sorry. Everything got boop. We do have our like and subscribe poll. That's why I was late. We were getting everything set up here. We were drinking until the last possible second. That's and lovely. Plus a few minutes. Um, and then uh, I just put up the lame like and subscribe and vote poll because, you know, people expect it. Are you subscribed? Yes. No. I don't. I think so. Let me check. Yes. Because that's the important thing. Just if you haven't hit the subscribe button already, please do and hit the like button. I know we haven't really talked about anything that you should like, but Danny's here. So that's enough of a reason to hit the like button. And uh, you like cannibalism and that's coming up. So stay tuned. Well, and Jeff, but. you know, not only if you if you donate $100 generously to the stream, not only are you helping Jeff in his ambitions to make this the best stream ever, as a matter of fact, and to educate others about maritime law. Also, you get a $100 super chat dance and the doggos. So please give generously to my dear friend, Jeff, and we will be happy. This is in your future if you're careful. Yeah. You do your thing. Yeah, yeah that's, that's enough. That's just a that's just a taste. Uh, but anywho. $10 super chat, AAA Ron. AA Ron with the, with the ship's bell. I tried soju for the first time this weekend. Not sure I'll be trying it again. Smart man. <laughs> Smart man. <laughs> uh, luckily, my new bottle of Sakura Kasi, uh, single malt turned out pretty good. Well, there are there. Th this is the uh, the second batch of Korean pure Korean uh, whis single malt whiskey. Not the best, but it's it's trying. Give it a few more years. Uh, the the probably the seventh or eighth or ninth, maybe the tenth 
batch will probably be good. Uh, but it's getting there. So, all right, folks. <sighs> let, let me tell you, Japanese plum wine or Korean plum wine, you want to get like a quick buzz. Mix uh, plum wine, either from Japan or Korea, with Sapporo beer, Japanese Sapporo beer. It only really? seems to work with Sapporo. Uh, but it, it'll give you a quick buzz. I would have never thought. <clears throat> that doesn't count. Nicholas Staroff. Okay, I want to see Jeff trying to hold it together while Danny dances. Well, you're only ninety dollars <laughs> away from that uh, seeing that happen. So thanks. You so missed much, that Nicholas. one. You missed that one by ninety dollars. But okay, we've got a. It took me. <laughs> it took me a minute to recognize Danny, and I got very confused then. So sorry. Yeah. Uh, I already read yours, Nicholas. Thank you very very much, sir. Um, let's get on with this because we have, like I said, we have at least two days, possibly three episodes dealing with the HMS wager. And all of it is read by yours truly, me, because there's not a video to go with this. So you just get the stuff that I have put together uh, and uh, learned about this particular case. So da da Danny will sit here and, and nod appropriately and, uh, you, know, add, uh, you know, whatever she's got to add, she can add. Um, not much, but I'll add. <laughs> well, you know, it's a comment section. Not much, but it's like 0.04. I'll add that. Today's Maritime Monday, filmed in front of a live studio audience. Oh, I need signs. <laughs> I need yeah. like the remark sign. Cheers. <laughs> Except I can't okay. see oh, it. Yeah, no, you can't hear it either. <laughs> also, uh, which one is antifreeze? That's the soju. Yeah. 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 Okay, continue. Yeah. All right. Now that I've pissed mm -hmm. off the entire Korean population, my apologies. <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> it's like a watered down manager. So now you've scooted back into the sides. No, I, look, I haven't. I look I'm even the, larger I'm the than studio I am. Audience. No, okay, look. I, I look even larger than I am. There now I'm big. Yeah, well, just scoot the damn chair over here. Dog, God damn it. I'm going to hit your dogs. Good. They'll teach them to stay out of the way. Okay, okay. I'm in the face. The flux applause. There you go. <laughs> All right, folks. I love uh, you, Flux. No, get out from underneath the See, see here's the problem. This is I get closer and then the dogs get possessive. The dogs get under the uh, They the want the love. There we go. There we go. All right. And there we the go. camera's uh, scooching it on over. That's my toe. Is that your toe over yeah, I'm I'm centering us so we don't have to center on it. All right, okay, folks. Okay, here we are. Dandy's not my eyes are Korea half alive now. Yeah, I'm probably not. And you know what? I don't want to leave Korea. Let's be honest. I don't even want to go home. I love it here. I love it here so much. You guys, people love me here. How many times do you get free drinks? Me? Yeah. All the time. Okay, Because me they're too. mine. Me too. No, I mean from like Korean restaurants. Never. Okay, I get free drinks here all the time. You know what else I Wonder get here? Why. Free food. Free, what, why? Because you're a woman. and Because I'm a white woman exactly. who speaks Korean. I'm telling you, you guys, Koreans love me. I love Korea. I was made for this place. That's all I'm going to say. And you know what's great about it too? My husband has never been to Busan. He was like, I don't even like Busan. Maybe, maybe I like Busan. <laughs> anyway, I come here and he's like, I never want to go home either. So we're going to stay here basically. Jeff, welcome. <laughs> You're a new neighbor. <laughs> well, welcoming me to my welcome own me house. to my own house. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, we, we should do that. <laughs> Those uh, were the days, oh, my no, no, friend, no, no, we thought we never not, not that one. Oh, no, different one. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just singing to myself. Don't mind me, guys. I don't get free stuff because I'm hot. I get free stuff because I'm annoying and people want to give me stuff to, like, be quiet. That's all. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. really, boy, the way Glenn Miller played. Song that made the hit parade. Guys like us, we had it made. <gasps> Those were the days. And you knew who you were then. Guiles were guiles and men were men. You've never seen All in the I've Family? I've never seen All in the Family. Oh my I do not God. know the song and I'm terrified. Wow. Oh. Absolutely Mr. terrified. We can use a man like Herbert Hoover again. Didn't need no welfare state. I didn't choose Everybody any of this. Everybody pulled his weight. I just was singing Those Were the Days, my yeah. friend, and now G here we are. G.R. Old LaSalle ran great. Those were the days. Anyway. Anyway. Is that... <laughs> I like that Jeff was singing to Danny. Well, Danny Thank was supposed you. to be singing to me as well, but she's never sang I've never said... I was singing the song. I was singing... Those were the days, my friend. I thought and, they'd never end. Okay, we're, tw we're, we're 21 minutes into this, and Forever people who are just coming here for their day. very first Maritime Monday are like, what the actual fuck have I walked into? <laughs> um, so, all right. 
Danny, where's the hubby? The hubby's right here. Hubby's right here. He's right here. Mr. Ron is right here. He's, he's you know, checking it out because he doesn't trust you degenerate chat. It's the chat he doesn't trust. Jeff, yeah. Jeff is fine. We're besties. Y'all. Mr. Ron's the greatest. Not so sure about. Just kidding. We love you, chat. Give us our money. Give <laughs> this, me your money. This is the best Maritime Monday ever, and we haven't even talked about Maritime Monday. Oh, Holy where's, shit. Wait, where's your boat, Sam? Oh, uh, yeah, baby. Love to okay. Too. Okay. There we are. All right. Let, let's actually talk about. Okay. Maritime let's talk Monday. about Maritime Monday. Um, no, Mister On has never been and never will be on stream. Mm -mm. He's an enigma. He's an enigma wrapped in a mystery. He is real though. Look. That's yes, real. he's real. He's real. I promise y'all. He's real. Sadly, I remember that. No, you should remember that song from the TV show. You should. It, yeah. Good for you, Karen. Legal Karen. What? Legal-minded friends, Karen. Kale. Good for you. <laughs> exactly. Chat is an absolute bunch of degenerates who should never be trusted. I am way too dyslexic to read that whole name. Hey, Joe, how could you tell that Danny's been here drinking for a while? So have I. So there we go. All right. Here we go, folks. Um, the HMS wager. And for those of you that are like, you've been all 300 and however many of you here and now, and there's only 109, 100 of you haven't done your job, get in there and smash that like button. We had a super, I missed a super chat. Hang on. Oh, we know that we did. We got that. There was, we needed a boot from Danny. We got, okay, we're, we're all covered with the super chat. Sorry. Which means you're just not okay. We're we're not grifting. We already did that. Okay, grifting is off the table. But if you do read the super chats, we'll give you that hundred dollars. Get to get to feed the ducks dance. Just saying. All right. Uh, the HMS wager for those of you that are just coming in. I swear to God, we're actually going to start talking about Maritime Monday right now. Uh, the this is the HMS wager, and let's talk a little bit about this. This ship, the HMS wager, was launched on March twelfth, seventeen thirty four. We've been derailed already with Michael Leitner. The Edith Bunker impression was perfect. Oh, he's a nice young man, Watchy. I'm oh, sorry. I, 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 yeah, I, I used to do Edith Bunker impressions as a child because you know. Anyway, uh, so it was launched the HMS. I guess I can take this down, can't I? <laughs> no, no, you can keep it up. <laughs> a little visual entertainment. <laughs> I'll entertain you. I'll entertain. I, Go I know, ahead. I know. Go ahead. No way. I know. We, Go can ahead. we can do. We can do. I'll pantomime. We can do this. Let's pull up the. We can have sort of a backdrop. I don't want to do a, a green screen backdrop with this, so we'll do a different backdrop here. Hang on. Give me a quick second. I'm thinking. I'm thinking outside the box. I'm thinking on the fly. While uh, he's thinking on the fly, let me tell you guys. When you come here to Korea, people here are so polite, and there are no smells. In anywhere you go. And when I say in anywhere you go, I don't mean anywhere you go. I mean inside any restaurant, hotel, service area. It is so lovely, which is so nice for me. If you're like me and you have an oversensitive over olfactory system, this place is designed for you. It is just such a delight. Oh, I tried live octopus for the first time. I've had it before, but I felt really guilty about it before. I had it really this time. And I really enjoyed it. You guys, mm. it is your moral duty to go out there and eat semi-live okay. octopus. Do you know why? Because it's delicious? Uh, well, that. But also because octopus are one of the smartest animals mm. in the world. And they're also aliens. It's only a matter <laughs> of time before they develop hands and fingers. As soon as they develop hands and fingers, they've taken over the world. So if you really care about Earth, if you care about humankind, if you care about your own existence... Nay, if you care about the existence of butterflies and all things that you enjoy in the world. Wait, ah, hang on. Oh you, my God, I'm out of control. There we are. It is your duty, nay, pleasure to eat live octopus. It is such a wonderful experience. It like sticks to the inside of your tongue and your lips and it's just delightful. All right, there we go. Apparently the uh, that's not going to work. So the, the last thing we can really try is to do a backdrop. And then I swear to God, we'll get on with this. Uh, they're not actually alive, Femme Natal. They're, they're dead, but the, their nerves are still They're twitching. dead instantly. They're like dead. They're like dead. Seconds dead. before they get to your plate. Yeah, uh, I would say about a minute before they get there. Well, anyway, like so like a minute, 60 seconds. Anyway, eh, 60 seconds, a minute, an hour. Anyway, they're still wiggly squiggly on the plate. And you have to kind of like fight to get them off the plate because they're grabbing onto the plate. But once you get them in your mouth, then they like grab onto your cheek. You really have to dip them in the soy or the soy sauce and sesame oil. And then they go down real quick. They're <sighs> delicious, you guys. The, the background thing doesn't work either. You just get us. So let's, let's listen to us talk about the HMS wager. 
Yes. Everybody settle in. And I'm going to have to put a tag at the beginning of in the description to say, if you really care about what we're talking about, skip ahead 30 minutes. Also, if you care about octopuses, skip ahead 30 minutes. Pretty much. Yeah. All right. So the HMS Wager was launched on uh, 12th March of 1734. And it was originally owned by the East India Company. And if you uh, if you go back and watch some of our other streams about like the Batavia, uh, the East India Company was it was a, it was a Dutch company that was so wealthy, they raised private armies larger than those of uh, other countries. And I told you I'm entertaining. I uh, so I, like the the East India Company was so wealthy that they would raise armies that were more powerful than a lot of countries they had private armies and uh, they owned the HMS wager for five years until 1739. And how much of a warship was this? It was such a warship that in 1739, they sold it to the British Royal Navy. And it, the ship was considered to be a sixth rate uh, naval vessel. And that doesn't mean it was bad. A sixth rate ship typically has a crew of about 150 to 240 men. So these are huge ships for the time. It measured between 450 and 550 tons. Uh, it had 28 guns. It was a 28 gun ship with a possibility of having 30 if you put two more on an upper deck. And it would have about 19 officers. Commissioned officers would include the captain, two lieutenants, warrant officers. It would include the uh, master, a ship surgeon, a purser, and the other quarter deck officer to be chaplains. And they had ro a Royal Marine lieutenant. Jeez. Uh, the ship also carried standing warrant officers, a gunner, a bosun, a carpenter, two ship's mates, four midshipmen, an assistant surgeon, uh, the captain's clerk, and then the rest of the men and crew there from the lower decks. You know, they, they, they all lived in upper ham in, in lower hammocks. Uh, they ate simple meals at tables, sitting on wooden benches. Now, the sixth rate usually carried about 23 Marines. In this case, they had about 500 Marines on the ship, and we'll, we'll figure out why in a minute. And then while working on a strong crew, the bulk of the rest were experienced, just regular, ordinary seamen. What's the difference between a Marine and a seaman, then? Like a military Marine, like a Marine Corps Marine. Okay, like so a Royal like, Marine. Like fighters yes, versus, like, like, yes, versus like drones. Mariners, yeah. Okay, yeah. got it. Got it. Also, yes. I developed a new appreciation for anyone who can stand up on a ship and decide to move guns around and fight other people on a ship. Like, I'm genuinely yeah. impressed. Tonight... <laughs> So today when we went on a little cruise outside around Busan, there was a ton of like waves, waves yeah. and surf. And I was really impressed at like my ability to stand up. But also I thought about how much men had to like drag these giant guns around the giant cannons. I don't know how they did it. Like you had to be incredibly strong, incredibly well balanced. Like, well, that's just, the cool thing is like where this had 28 guns, they'd have two banks of seven cannon ports. On the side, so they'd have like you know the, these large four, six, and eight pound cannons that were just like you've seen in the movies. The, yeah. The, the door opens, the cannon sticks out, and then they just kind of right. try to broadside the other ships. But then, how cool. do they time out the wicks too? Because if you're if your ship, it's all like, yeah, it's, it's all way, in the deal, done, yeah, right? Yeah, you, like you that's time incredible. It out, distant space, you know, the, we're exactly because you're you're both moving towards each other, and then you got to time the the shooting of everything. So it's actually quite a scientific so, little endeavor. So would the Marines have the same experience as the sailors then? Well, the Marines were more land fighters. We're going to find out why there were so many Marines okay. on this ship okay, in, okay. In, a, in a bit. Uh, and then the weaker crew, there'd be like a large port. The, the, the lands people, they were just adults who, like Danny, are unused to the sea. They just kind of hang out there. Um, now, the, the uh, larger six rate, they were the 28 guns, including four smaller guns mounted on the quarter deck and classed as frigates. Mm -hmm. The smaller sixth rates would have between 20 and 24 guns. This was the one of the largest of the sixth rate Royal Navy vessels at the time. Uh, the vessels could perhaps be considered comparable to like light cruisers or destroyers in more recent times. Uh, but in the, an interesting thing, these were, these were floating castles. The, these warships were floating castles. They were, they were just to, made to dominate the waves and dominate the enemy. And it would take upwards of 4,000 trees to build one of these warships. Jesus, where did they get the trees? from places where there's trees, mountains and things, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Like, <laughs> yeah. did they use cedar? Like, was there a particular wood they had? To... Okay, I'll shut up. Yeah, Sorry, like... my ADHD is taking over. Keep going, <laughs> and so to carry out the voyages, in addition to, I mean, taking 4,000 trees to make these ships, nice. you know, these, these voyages would last for a year or more. So they would literally need 
tons upon tons of supplies, you know, just food to survive. And they would ordinarily take around 40 miles of rope for the riggings and then 40 miles of rope and between 15 and 18,000 square feet of sailcloth to repl replace the sails with. And literally a farm's worth of like cows and pigs and sheeps and goats. And what are you laughing at, Danny? I'm sorry, have you not seen it road to El Dorado? That's one of the complaints that one of the gods make is they turn and they go, there's not enough rope. <laughs> It's like all the ships I've seen need more rope. And so you're absolutely right. Yeah. Apparently they need a ton of fucking rope. Who knew? Well, if, if I mean, if you look at I these, mean, you knew, but if I you look at these pictures of these frigates and things, these, these gigantic ships, there's, there's just miles of ropes everywhere. Jesus. For and what? So you just for to, to raise and lower and, like and turn the, the mass and secure everything? everything. Yeah. Wow. Um, I'm sure I've got a picture of a, of a, a, a ship rope picture with lots of ropes. I'm on sure it. you guys really are interested in this rope discussion like I am, but I am really fascinated in these ropes. Oh, it doesn't look like 40, I do. Hold on, 40 miles? Yeah, for like spare parts and ropes and things. Just extra rope, just laying around. Yeah. No one's worried about choking themselves, no, falling I mean, the, off the, the edge. The ropes, I mean, they're like this. They're huge, okay, I'll huge just take, ropes. I'll take your word for the rope, but Jesus, that's a lot of... How do you have that much space for... How many men? Uh, about 250. On 250 men. How many guns? 28 or 28 30. guns. 20 and you guys, we're when we say guns, we mean like cannons, but minor cannons. Think of it like a smaller cannon. So 28 guns, 200 some odd men, 40 miles of rope, enough provisions to last you a lifetime or not a lifetime, maybe what, three months, two months? Let's see. Yeah. Yeah, two months at sea. Like, this is really a remarkably large ship. And you said this is one of the lower class ships? Here's oh, okay. That's a lot of rope. Here's, yep. here's a good... I mean, this is just the front shot of a relatively small ship. Uh, where are we at here? You guys, wait. Wait wait till we see the small ship rope. Like, this is actually remarkable. Like, yeah. as a normie, as a, a maritime normie, I'm impressed by this. So I mean, this this is just appears to be a one or two mast ship. The uh, the HMS Wager was a a three mast with an extra spar mast in front of it. And if I mean, if if you look, I mean, you can see all of these ropes that are out there. So do men actually swing down yes. the ropes? So that's all oh, I yeah. want to know. Like, is my prince charming going to swing down the rope and like pull I mean, just, out his sword and? Blah, 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 I mean, just look whatever. at all of that rope that goes yeah, on these things. That's a lot of rope. Yeah. So for spare parts, they would keep up to forty miles of rope. So that whole joke, like that whole joke of cutting the rope and cutting the wrong rope and having a chandelier fall, pretty accurate. Yeah, that's a thing. Okay. Yeah, that's right. All right. That, so cut the right rope, you guys. Know your yeah. ropes. Oh my God. Is that what they mean by learning the ropes? Yes. It's exactly what it means. Oh my God. I just learned something new. No, there's this a, is insane. No, there's a huge amount of maritime terms that came from seeing like, uh, well, knots I know because I'm yeah. a pilot. So we, we yeah. just so you guys know, so like air knots, we, we judge speed and knots based on like how many knots you pull as the, as the wind pulls your sail out. So you can judge how fast you're going along the ocean. Right. Yeah, and I, yeah. I mean, things like a turning a blind eye, that comes from a maritime deal. A, a particular uh, captain was actually blind in one eye, and they were told not to fire on someone if they could see them. So he jokingly put his <laughs> put his, uh, his telescope to his blind eye, oh, and hilarious. he was literally turning a blind eye and said, "I, I don't see them, so I guess we're good. Oh my I God, guess we're good brilliant. to go." Uh, I mean, there, there's so many things like that. Uh, that you know that. Uh, deal with maritime. So we, we should get into like all the, the ways that maritime things hey, have affected hey, our, our lives. Emma Rasu, just because I practice law doesn't mean I practice maritime law. As a matter yeah. of fact, if you've ever watched Arrested Development, you'll know that maritime law is a made up law anyway. It is, pretty much. So. Or if you've watched the Daryl Brooks trial, you know the same thing. Uh, <laughs> and X Comer Triple Z with the North Korean $50. Thank you so much. When are you doing the USS Liberty? I don't know. I don't usually do like naval ship but we're doing one today but this is like an old naval ship so it's different but i don't know it uh, it actually is on the list i've got a whole list of naval ships uh, i've got a couple of other ones that are on the list before that but uh, we'll we'll get there eventually so let's let's jump back to our our our, our people here on the uh, on the ocean so they have basically they have 40 miles of ropes 15 to 18,000 square feet of sailcloth an entire farm's worth of pigs, cows, horses, goats, sheep, well, not horses, uh, cows, pigs, sheep, goats, and things like that, chickens, whatever. 
but so the Admiralty, the Royal Admiralty, they bought the HMS Wager to fill a squadron under a Commodore named George Anson. And George Anson, it was ostensibly they wanted him to uh, to patrol south of the South American coast and maybe circumnavigate the globe, globe, but he was under secret orders to harass the Spanish fleet as well as attack a particular a Spanish galleon that was loaded down with silver. That was, that was a secret mission that even the captain wasn't aware of. <laughs> the captain was just told what to do, and he did his job. I see. And so... And uh, the the role in this, there was this fleet of eight ships. We'll talk about the fleet here in a second. But the role of the wager was to carry additional stores uh, of small arms, ball and powder, rum, food, to arm the shore raiding parties, which is where the Marines came in. I see. Okay. The Marines, because uh, it, it was it was apt that she carried the name of the principal sponsor of the voyage, Admiral uh, Sir Charles Wager. He was the first Lord of the Admiralty at the time. Uh, but Anson's expedition to the Pacific began in August of 1740. And he had six warships and two transports. It was manned by a total of 1,854 men. So there's about 2,000 men in this fleet. And the Navy commissioned the wager under a captain with a really cool name. His name was Captain Dandy Kid. He's just a dandy kid. Uh, <laughs> what a delightful name! Yeah, so Captain Dandy Kid was—he uh, was, you know, he was, he was commissioned to be the captain of the wager, but unfortunately, he died before the ship reached. He left England and reached the Cape Cape Horn there at uh, South America. He died before then. That's so. And uh, Lieutenant David Cheap, which is. <laughs> It sucks even no, worse. No, yeah, we're, we're not so, making up these names. There, like so another, Danny Kid yeah, dies, and then yeah, David the, Cheap takes The kid over. dies, and Danny Cheap uh, gets promoted to acting captain. <laughs> but also one of the captains of the other ship was a Captain Salt. Um, <laughs> I'm not making this shit up. These are like their real names. It's encouraging. Yeah. Uh, it, it's almost like a Dickensian novel where they have all these Dickensian names. Uh, so, yeah, David Cheap was promoted to acting captain after the uh, – after uh, Captain Dandy Kid died, uh, we'll talk about his death here in just a little bit. But the squadron, this is just kind of giving you the nutshell of where we're going. This, this the squadron rounded Cape Horn in terrible weather, and Ca mm. Cape Horn in South America is considered to be one of the most dangerous. To this day, it's one of the most dangerous passages in the entire world. Why? Because you're so far south and you're under all of the continents, and the waters, most of the waters, will circulate from east to west. These waters circulate west to east, and they go around the entire globe, and then they get they get wedged between Antarctica and South America, where it funnels in, and it, it just basically creates a rapids on the ocean to where you get these constant storms, constant hurricanes, 30-meter, 90-foot waves are, are a daily occurrence there. And so, isn't, it, isn't that where, like, the world's top uh, surfers go to hit those giant swells. Yeah, they're, they're in like those an Australia. Like and the swells uh, and stuff where they like hit the wave and they just pummel down they, it. They would probably die if they were, if they were doing their Cape Hope. They might No, they do it. They I've seen a few videos of it and it is remarkable from like off the coast of Argentina area, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That is yeah. where it is. That's incredible. And uh, every four years they have an around the world sailing competition. And uh, one of our guests in the next couple of weeks is, is going to, he's booked a slot on this uh, around the world race, but it's considered like a great honor to be part of the crew that sails their, their uh, racing ships around the, the Cape Good Hope, around the Cape, Cape, Cape Hope. In that case, I love it. Uh, so, I mean, it's a, it's a huge, huge deal to get through there. And it, it's a Passion. very, very dangerous passage. And uh, well, again, to give you a little bit of a, a preview of what happens. They round Cape Horn in terrible weather, and the ships are scattered, and the wager unfortunately became separated, and then uh, needed to make a rendezvous at a later point. But unfortunately, uh, she turned north before she she was coming up around South America, and she turned north before she went far enough west, and uh, foul weather sort of uh, caused them some problems, and they ended up being shipwrecked. And that's what we're going to be talking about. We have a viewer who lives in Cape Town. Is that the same? That's South, that's South Africa. The South Africa, yeah. right? With the yeah. giant... You have great whites, bro. You have great whites. Enjoy your great white sharks. Very cool in Cape Town. Not only great whites, you have also incredible seals that are endemic to that region. So please enjoy those as well. They don't have great whites anymore. Apartheid driver. Mm. Oh, my God. That was a you joke, not a me joke. 
You no, that, that. that's my favorite Robin Williams that. joke. That's Prime, Prime Minister joke. Botha, white courtesy phone, please. Prime <laughs> Minister Botha, white courtesy phone. Um, oh. That's my favorite oh, okay, Robin Williams I, I joke. All right, Captain <laughs> Anson. Cap- <laughs> captain Anson, he was promoted to a captain, and he, he was a Commodore. He, he was promoted to Commodore, and he was charged with taking six boats and about uh, 500 people on his boat and a total of, as we mentioned, about Five, about 2,000 people in total uh, on this journey. They were, they, were, they were tasked with capturing Peru, starting an anti-Spanish rebellion in Peru, capturing Panama, and capturing, this was the one, the secret part of it was to capture the Spanish treasure galleon. Sounds like a CIA on a Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. Back in 1734. Sure. No, Anson, not Hanson. Anson, A-N-S-O-N. So Captain Anson. And, uh, Unfortunately, there were storms, disease, volcanoes, war, and other dis- dangers and disasters. And it sort of ended up accidentally being a circumnavigation of the globe. Now, now, there was eight ships. There were the Gloucester, the Severn, the Pearl, the Wager, the Trial, Anna, Industry, and Centurion. Centurion was the flagship. And in uh, in in March, I believe it was, of 1740. I forgot to forgot to write the actual date they set sail from Great Britain bound for Rio. And the the problem was this the war the war had already been declared on Spain. They were already they had already been tasked with engaging the Spanish fleet. But they were stuck in the docks in Great Britain for about six months. So they were delayed. They really wanted to get out. They were stranded there. And finally they got out of Great Britain. They got out of Great Britain. They started to sail to Rio. And it turned out that like these delays had led the Spanish to be aware that the fleet was coming. And they, the Spanish had actually dispatched a fleet to chase, a much larger fleet to chase Anson's fleet. Hmm. And uh, they, after they left Great Britain, they stopped at Portugal for supplies like before they started sailing to Rio. Uh, but the two week, they were, they were supposed to be in Portugal for two weeks. It turned up being six weeks. So they're even more delayed. Not a good sign. No. See, this thing got off to a really bad start, which just presaged all of the shit that was about to happen to them. Because they, they were delayed for six months in Great Britain, delayed for an additional month in Portugal. And then while they're sailing across the Atlantic to Rio, the uh, the vessel was over. All the vessels were overcrowded. The the wager particularly. And people were sleeping in these unventilated holds. And if, if you've Ooh. seen if you've seen the pictures of how they stacked slaves into the yeah. slave boats, yeah. just like you know, asses to elbows, feet to head, and just like packed them in. That's how they were sleeping on these ships. Because there were so many mm-hmm. crewmen and just so many people on these ships, they just packed them in. Oh, the smell. Yeah, and the, these the unventilated like holds. Me. They're you know, they're side by side. People are oh. getting sick. People are getting weak. I'd be getting sick and weak. They get typhus. I mean, this is true. Tra- no, I'd jump overboard. I'd yeah. be done. Typhus. I mean, it's transmitted by lice. There was these ama- these most horrific lice outbreaks. <laughs> Shark bait. Whoa. Yeah, they got, <laughs> That's where I'm at. Yeah, I they, they got dysentery, Jesus. which was extreme diarrhea. And I mean, just oh. imagine being in a hold with 300 people sleeping asses to elbows and having extreme, extreme diarrhea. diarrhea. No, imagine being the guy next to the guy yeah. with extreme diarrhea. That's what I'm imagining. Yeah, right. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. John Gordon says, ew. Yeah. Ew. <laughs> ew. ew. Yeah. That's like so ew. <laughs> Gross. Gross. Like, oh my God. Gag me with a spoon. Oh my God. He's like totally nauseous, man. Oh my God. Uh, I can't even. Yes, it was literally the poop deck. <laughs> nice. That was a good one. Good one, Porcelain. And with a name like Porcelain Thunder, that joke suits you properly. Oh, that is beautiful. Uh, great colonizer sharks. Uh, right. <laughs> colonizer sharks. Well, now see, these weren't slave ships. You say, you know, the, where, where'd we go? The, mm. uh, oh, the slaves were like yucky. Oh. No, these people were paid for and oh. came there voluntarily. No, right? they weren't. Stay tuned oh for God. more. Stay tuned <laughs> for more. It gets worse. It gets worse. And when I say it gets worse, I mean, it gets better. We haven't even Wait, started no, I mean, to get worse. I mean, when I say it gets better, it gets worse. That's what I mean. Yeah. We say. haven't yeah. even started to get worse. Jesus. Yet. So it's already bad. they've got all of these problems. Lice transmitted typhus, extreme diarrhea, scurvy, you know, just horrible, horrible things. And for those who don't know, scurvy is a is a form of like severe vitamin C deficiency. And it causes like general weakness, 
anemia, these horrific gum diseases, bleeding from the mouth, your teeth fall out, wounds heal poorly, you get skin lesions and hemorrhages, you kind of get a little bit psycho, and other really bad things happen to you. Scurvy is, is, they didn't know what this was. It was just this mysterious wasting disease that was affecting the crew. Bro, I'm out. Yeah. I'm out. You know, that's actually interesting because something similar happens to um, astronauts when they went into yeah. outer space for the first time. They had um, bone density loss. Yeah. So they would come back with osteoporosis and it took a while to figure out, oh, wait, we have to actually exercise while we're in yeah. zero gravity. And see, so that was the, really similar. Like well, yeah, they had the that same type of effect and they couldn't figure out what was going Is, on. There was a lot of people that they're like the ligaments were dissolving in their legs. Oh. So like you're just walking and suddenly your leg goes like this because your ligaments and tendons have gone. Uh, there was one guy that had had an injury 50 years before that had healed and just suddenly it rebroke because it's just, the, it was just wasting. It was just horrible, horrible, horrible stuff. What is that? Vitamin C, the vitamin yes. C company. You know, the emergency. High C? Emergency. Oh, oh emergency. Sponsor yeah. legal vices. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It won't get scurvy. And there's a, there's a great pink song out there called scurvy. I, 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 yeah. There's a great pink song. She was on uh, Sesame street and she did a song about we scurvy. Need to learn the song. Well, I, I brought, I did it once and instantly got, uh, got red flagged. Damn it. it. Yeah. So I, I would love to play the scurvy song, but if you get scurvy bored, go, go, Screw you. go check out these scurvy. Just, scurvy you. Just go to YouTube, search scurvy and pink and you'll hopefully get, <laughs> hopefully get a video by pink. No, but um, seriously, emergency yeah. sponsor. It was, it was on, was it on SpongeBob? Okay. I thought it was Sesame Street. I don't know. But anyway. Whatever. Same yeah. deal. <laughs> totally different. But anyway, with all of these problems, they managed to eventually get to Rio in Brazil. <laughs> and his conditions were so bad on this ship that it took a month. It took over a month to clean the vessels. That's just how much just, yeah, there was. And was it even clean after that? Yeah. I don't want to. And, uh, but the problem was while they're in Rio and they're cleaning out the ships, they were exposed to all of these new tropical diseases in Rio that they'd never been faced with before. So actually, by the time they left Rio, there were more crewmen who were sick than when they arrived at Rio. Nope. It, was, it's, it literally, this is a story that literally gets worse and worse and literally every day gets I'm worse out. and worse and worse. I'm out. And so <laughs> while they're in Rio, the uh, the vessel industry, you, you remember the industry was one of the eight ships that came. The uh, industry had second thoughts and said, you know, they went all Danny on and said, fuck this shit, I'm out. And they yeah, turned exactly. around and went home. And I bet they lived. They lived, <laughs> didn't they? They did. The industry uh, lived. <laughs> don't know to self. Fuck this shit, I'm out, you yeah. live. That's and, the rule. And because of all of this problem with the industry saying, fuck this shit, I'm out, Commodore Anson had to shuffle some crew around. And so the, the greatly named <laughs> Captain dandy kid he went from being the captain of the wager to being the captain of the pearl and lieutenant cheap <laughs> uh he was he was a lieutenant on the trial he was promoted to acting captain and took over as acting captain of the wager at which point whoever is left over you deserve yeah. to die okay like if you want to stay under the captainship or the the leadership of captain cheap you deserve what's coming to you. Right. Okay, that's all I'm going to say. And Sympology 101 says, fun fact, when the food supplies would be depleted, the soldiers would resort to eating leather and sawdust. That's <laughs> why they would get scurvy in the first place. Oh, my God. Mm. See? See? Yeah. Fuck this shit, I'm out is the best rule of life. Yeah, like, not, not the black pearl. Fuck the shit, I'm out. <laughs> yeah. That's how you live life. Uh, <laughs> stop putting holes in my... Well, see, putting holes in my ship, that was a problem. Because, like I said, it took four thousand trees to build one of these ships and you've got all the bugs and termites and things that are eating this thing slowly away so that's why they had a carpenter on board that could literally replace things as they went under as, as they underwent all these problems john gordon can't make this shiz up well you know what this is the interesting thing that i learned while i was researching the hms wager sometime in uh, 2024 a martin scorsese film starring leonardo dicaprio will uh, it's called the wager will be out oh so, i uh, love me some leonardo DiCaprio. i believe leonardo will be playing captain cheap although i don't <laughs> <laughs> soccer i don't love leonardo dicaprio as much as he loves underage yes. brides exactly but you're, I do you're love, too old for him i do love leonardo dicaprio and, 
American Brand. Steve says, oh boy, a cheap wager. No, it was actually spelled C-H-E-A-P. That was His name was like spelled that way. For legal reasons, that was a joke. We Weevil's in the grain. Oh, yes, the master. And, oh, sorry. Master and commander. I, I almost slipped because I have, I've I've been making this joke ever since it came out. It's really, really inappropriate. And I make had to it. catch myself. No, yeah, make it. No, I, I always call the movie Master and Command Me the Far Side of the Strap On. <laughs> I should have made that. I, you, I told you I'm it was so, inappropriate. So ready. That was inappropriate. I told you it was inappropriate. I literally used I the disavow. word inappropriate. No, it's okay. I disavow. And you said do that's it. A, so. No, that's how we get it. And I almost said I that. I almost said that. I and then I corrected myself. We're okay. But yeah, the, the master and commander, uh, they made that stupid weevil joke. Uh, it was kind of <laughs> lame. But all right. <clears throat> yeah, Dan, you're like 20 years too old for Leo. Exactly. That actually would be accurate. Yeah, no, it is. Yeah, because uh, no, I'm 33. <laughs> yeah. Right? Right. And so, For legal reasons, I get a joke. Now, who was Captain Cheap? <laughs> Captain Cheap was he was an imposing. <laughs> people see, see, people in chat like the joke, but it's just a problem I've had ever since it came out. I just thought the movie was the movie was actually one of the more accurate movies. It was about, actually really well done. No, it was, was very very really accurate as that. far as navigation yeah. and, and things go, but it was just a bad movie. Really. I yeah. liked it. It was just a bad It's a movie. slow burn. You have to be really sick in bed. It was, I, I like the Horatio Hornblower novels better than it was based. But anyway. That uh, sounds way dirtier than whatever. <laughs> uh, all right. <laughs> Captain Cheap was, he was this very imposing, powerful guy. And he had these, these fits of anger. He would just burst into rage. Wait, wait, wait. Dur Is he Scottish? Shh. God damn it. I knew it. During which he, he, he would insult his crew. He would question their competence. He was angry and Scottish. <laughs> okay, for all those who don't know, yeah. this isn't culture appropriation. This isn't racism. I also am Scottish. Apologies so to, to all joke. of my Scottish viewers, but yes. <laughs> I, need to make uh, this joke. I, I, I have a few Glaswegians in my family as well. Yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. And, and uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, been there, done that. Bring us out of this here. <laughs> Been there, done that with a $2 super chat. Hi, I am Captain Cheap, hence my $2 super chat. <laughs> Thank you <laughs> Thank so you much. Thank you, been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, Legal Vices is the only second person I've ever heard reference Horatio Hornblower. That's impressive. And if, if, if you uh, if you want to read Horatio Hornblower in space, Kaiser Pineapple, read David Weber's Honor Harrington season series. It's essentially Horatio Hornblower in space with spaceships under the command of... Uh, a, a female captain, which is great, great deal. The, the honor oh, Harrington. Is her name. Yeah. I'll so uh, re read, read the honor Harrington season series by David Weber uh, for Horatio Hornblower in space. Pigs in space. Elvish, Scottish. Yeah. Same deal. Yeah. All right. So uh, again, sorry to all you Scottish people, but Hey, it's a fact. Uh, and Captain Cheap, or acting Captain Cheap, he was still like officially lieutenant. <sighs> Nicholas Starov gets a bell as well. Oh, he gets no, that's the big bell. We need a small bell. <laughs> Nicholas Starov's trial watch Scots, Welsh, Irish, you're all Scandinavians because Nicholas stopped in to say hi. Uh, <laughs> Hello. No, that's how they say Hello. So he, Captain Cheap, or acting Captain Cheap, but he was actually Lieutenant Cheap. Uh, that's how cheap he was. He was a captain. He was acting captain, but he was only lieutenant. That's how cheap he was. Uh, he, he was, he'd never before captained a large ship like this. And he was woefully unprepared for the task. But cheap was, however, a very, very capable seaman. And he was a great navigator. He was a huge man who feared absolutely nobody. He was loyal to the crown and he was a determined officer. And all of this comes into play a little bit later in the cheap story. Now, shortly after they set sail again from Rio, they got caught up in bad weather as they're going around Cape Horn. Uh, it continued to plague them. They, they, and so what they'd done is all of the ships had got to, well, except for the other one that like fucked off, um, the, the remaining ships, they all set these rendezvous points with like times and places so that if they got separated, they would uh, be able to sort of regroup at these various uh, rendezvous points. So they set these rendezvous points in case they got separated. Uh, the Pearl was the first ship to get separated. That was with the, with the Captain Dandy Kid at the helm. Wait, uh, wait, wait. So Dandy Kid went to the Pearl? Yes, he, he went to the Pearl and then Cheap came over to the, to the, to the wager. Very aptly named. What yeah. a wonderful match, the Pearl and the Dandy Kid. Exactly. Sure. Uh, so unfortunately, the, uh, the storm they were caught in killed Captain 
kid. He, they killed the dandy kid. Oh. He died during this this storm as they were going towards the uh, towards Cape Hope, Cape Horn. Sorry, Cape Hope. Cape Hope's is high. Uh, so they were going towards Cape Horn, and uh, the captain of the Pearl died. <laughs> And as they were trying to get to the rendezvous point, the Pearl met up with some other vessels flying the British flag. They're like, oh my God, we've got, we're, we, we see the British flag. These our must friends. be our guys. Yeah. Let's get close. But it turned out it was the Spanish fleet that was chasing them. Oh, God. They, they were flying false British flags. And they didn't realize that until they got within visual range of the ship. So it was a double cross, double cross. Yeah. Well, and the Pearl wasn't in on the double cross though. No, they, they were like, oh my God, th these are our right, enemies. Right. And, uh, the Pearl had to basically jettison all of their cargo. Uh, they were so loaded down with cargo and whatnot that it was covering their cannon ports, so they couldn't fight. They had to drop everything, plus they needed to get as much weight off the ship as possible so that they could outrun the Spanish fleet. So they threw everything that wasn't nailed down overboard, and then they booked it on out of there, and they barely escaped with their lives. They they lived? They did. The Extra scurvy, <laughs> but they lived. Exactly. Okay. Uh, so they they survive they just barely survived this in, encounter with the Spanish fleet by lightening the vessel and throwing every everything possible overboard including their supplies and then they regrouped with the fleet. And after regrouping with the fleet, the fleet stopped to at this island to try to resupply to replace some of the stuff that, that the pearl had lost throwing it overboard but unfortunately the island that they decided to resupply on had no fresh water. There was no wood for making repairs. But ironically, the one thing the island had was an abundance of limes. Hell yeah! Heavily laden with vitamin C. No more scurvy, bitches! But they didn't know back then that limes would have saved their lives, so they huh. didn't take a single lime on board with them. Cheers! Uh, yeah, cheers. <laughs> and so you know, they, they still had their scurvy plus a bunch of other shit. And they didn't have any fresh water. They didn't have any wood to repair the ships. And they approached Cape Horn woefully under-provisioned. And with scurvy. And extra with, scurvy. With, oh, the extra scurvy Extra coming. scurvy. They just have, like, additional scurvy. Extra okay. scurvy's extra coming. Extra scurvy's coming. Yeah, God so dang. Now, again, as, as I was mentioning, the, the waters around Cape Horn are particularly hazardous. It's like owing to these strong winds and the large waves that can get up to 30 meters, 90 feet, strong currents and icebergs if you happen to go there during the winter, which, spoiler alert, winter's coming. These hazards, uh, they, it, made the, uh, it made Cape Horn notorious as perhaps the most dangerous ship passage in the world, as I mentioned. And many ships have been wrecked. Many sailors have died attempting to round the Cape. The prevailing wind, particular problem for vessels trying to round the horn against them, Again, from east to west, because remember, they're coming from England going east to west, but the winds and the waves are going west to east. Uh. And this is a particularly a problem for these sailing ships that have these gigantic, massive sailing masks, masts, so they're not making very good headway. So it's like an ice-cold toilet bowl. Pretty much. Okay. Yeah. So I'm they, on board. Okay. Yeah, they're not, making, uh, they're not making any headway against these winds. Even at the best of times, it's difficult to sail through. Jeez. And Commodore Anson's fleet reached Cape Horn at exactly the wrong time of year. Now, while they, uh, while they arrived at the Cape on a relatively calm day, one crewman, very prophetic, well, not really prophetic, it was kind of a, it was in a retrospect. He wrote in his diary or in his journal, it was the last cheerful day that the greatest part of us would ever live to enjoy. Oh, how heart-wrenching is that? Yeah, that's, Jesus. That's, that's what he wrote in his... And this is the beginning of the voyage, basically. <laughs> it was the last cheerful day that the greatest part of us would ever live to enjoy. No, the greatest part of us left with the industry. Okay? <laughs> Fuck this shit, I'm out. That's the moral of the story. Now, that Jeez. day, that same day, <laughs> a storm came. Oh. And uh, let me... Well, I will show you in a little bit, but, no, but I mean, the, the, the Cape Horn is, I mean, it's just a relatively small area of land, you know, a few hundred miles across, but because of the wind, the currents, the waves and the storms, and not to, not to mention everything else, it took them over a month to round this tiny little Cape of land. 
Wait, over a month? They struggled against the wind and the waves and the storms for over a month. How many miles is that? Like 25 it's miles? It's just 20? a couple, at most a couple hundred. You know, Jeez. To, and it took them over a month to do this. Jesus. And again, while they're doing this, or during this month that they're trying to get around this cape, Scurvy is just ravaging the crew in what's been described as one of the greatest outbreaks of scurvy in human history. Are you serious? Yeah. So while I'm sitting here joking about scurvy, it is actually one of the greatest outbreaks of scurvy in human history. In human history. Jeez. And again, all those limes they left on the island could have prevented that. And once, once scurvy became understood as a vitamin deficiency, the Royal Navy took to provisioning their vessels with enormous amounts of limes, which led to the British being given the moniker limeys. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, because of the limes to prevent scurvy. So they could have had a few south sides and made it just they, fine. Exactly. So south sides are made of lemons. Oh, of course not. They could have had lots yeah, of mojitos they could have had or something. a lot of those. Yeah. Mojitos so yeah, that's yeah. Uh, one, once they realized that, oh, it's vitamin C deficiency, limes have a huge concentration. There's lots of limes in the southern regions. Uh, you know, they started provisioning them, and that's where the British got the moniker limeys from yeah. but literally i mean we they started out with about two thousand crewmen during this travel from great britain around cape horn literally hundreds and hundreds of crewmen died on the ships and we're just we're just thrown into the sea unceremoniously at there there were times when the crew was so weak they couldn't throw the crew the dead people over into the sea and they just let them rot on the decks of the ship how many people were we at by now uh we're down we hundreds and hundreds we're, we're down into the into the low thousands at this point into the low 1000 at this point how many on this particular vessel uh 200 250 were on the hms wager about 250 so if and, we guess maybe a hundred left? Oh no, no, there's more than that. We'll, okay. we'll we'll get we'll get to that number in just a quick second. I mean, because that's remarkable. If you're losing yeah. thousands of men, you have, or at least hundreds. even a thousand hundreds of men, you have to think like, who's going to man the ship? Who's going to take care of everyone else? Like this is really. Who who is that lady? Is that Mrs. Larex? No, this is Mrs. <laughs> on. This is Danny on direct. Danny on direct. She's here with her lovely Korean husband visiting Korea. Uh, we're, we're besties anyway. We're R-I-L friends. Uh, I hang out with Danny, when I, Danny and Mr. On when I go to Utah. And uh, she's made her, her first appearance here in Korea for many, many, many years. Oh, well, 10. Because we were both here together. Well, I mean, in the same city for back in 2012. Oh, my God. 12 years. It's been yeah, 12 years since I've been in Busan. Cheers. Oh, Cheers, everyone. Do you need more? No, I okay, don't need right. any more. Well, want, want and need are different, I guess. Ouch. <laughs> um, right. So, yes, that, this is Danny on Direct. Everybody should go to Danny on Direct's channel and subscribe to her. Please do. I'm actually an attorney. I know I sound like a doofus here, but it's because I don't know maritime law. I'm learning fun. from Jeff, and I'm having a great time. So thank you so much for having yeah. me on with you, Jeff. <laughs> what? Lemons don't grow well in England, but limes can be grown there. Thus, the preference for lime juice in the daily grog. Arr. Interesting. Arr. Arr. Lime is yar. Uh, all hail Aphrodite, says David Nelson. Thank you, David Nelson. I love you. I and Valhalla you. also says all hail Aphrodite. I love you. miss you as well. And I promise I will be streaming here shortly. I have just been out in the sticks. Jeff can attest to yeah. this. Once I am in a place where I have some, yeah, in real life, uh, legally blonde. But I will tell you, it's a weird thing. Her hair is actually more platinum in person than it is on camera. It is. If that's possible. To Thank work. you for attesting to that because I always feel like on camera, my, my blonde comes out yellow. Yeah. It looks more, it's, but it's, it is, yeah. it is really white. It is yeah, very, it is. very white. White. So, very white the time. All white. right. So anyway, let's get back to hundreds and hundreds of people rotting on the decks of ships. Arr. Arr. Uh, Vacation Danny is fun, lol, says. <laughs> Vacation Danny. Danny is needs fun. more whiskey, says Flux. Danny doesn't need any more whiskey. Thank you very much, Flux. I love you, though. But it's here. Salt Lake City whiskey, if you want. No, it. the Blanton's. Remind is you gone. of home. The Blanton's is gone. Yes, we drank all the Blanton's. The Blanton's is gone. Tank Rat 2 has been a member for one month. Wow, my alt account has membership, lol. Yes, you you may or may not have been involved in uh, in products that evening. Uh, when you, <laughs> when you, uh, but thank you so much for, for the membership chat there, Tank Rat 2. Uh, been there, done that, has also met Danny. Yes, we, we all hung out together with uh, Sally and... Swan Lake. Swan Lake lady and... Uh, been there, done that. Been there, done that. And I'm liquored up due to Grasse. Oh, my God. 
can't remember what his I can't remember what his YouTube name is. I can't remember what his YouTube chat name shame. is. Shame. No, I don't I don't want to say his real name, but shame. dude across the table. Holy crap, I can't remember. Shame. Panda Milk. That's right, because he has like different names he uses. Shame. Panda Milk was the one he <laughs> it was the one that he, he uses mostly around these. That parts. was my bell. It was a pretty yeah. bell, huh? It is. Shame. shame. <sighs> Yeah, pan panda milk. That's right. You, you, panda milk was great. You guys were all great. great. And yeah. as a matter of fact, next time we have a meetup, please all come. That was a lot of fun. It was. Even though Danny had scurvy and was out racing a storm from Salt Lake. Arr! It was raining pretty bad. Anyway, all right. So in addition to this scurvy, frostbite was claiming body parts. Oh, nasty. And, oh, there's nothing worse than scurvy than frostbite. And crewman's hands would freeze and they because they couldn't hold on, they would fall overboard. Oh, Jesus. And then people, like, as I mentioned earlier, people would, would like drop dead on the decks and the crew wouldn't have the energy to throw the bodies overboard. Oh, my and, God. And But, I mean, although hundreds of lives were lost, no ships were lost up to that point. How? And, and one thing that ha will be shortly lost is Tank Rat with the 500 IUDs. Uh, thank you so much for that. That's a drink up. That's a drink up command. And that is about 136 US dollars last I checked, which means... Danny dance time. Danny and dance doggy time. Cam. And and doggy. Cheers, Doug, cheers. Well, the doggos are like hanging out. I with promise Mr. doggo Aunt. time and and doggy. Cam. Okay, in in lieu of doggo cam. I hear doggy sneaky. Oh no, doggy's under my foot. <laughs> he goes. Ur, 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 ur. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Yoda. Doggy, go go fuck off over there. Okay. <laughs> All right, sleep, doggy. I'm so tired. I'm All right, now we get oh, to yeah. try the yeah. new cable because I got a, I got a new so doggo cam cable. Yeah, try it. Uh, let's see. She's looking at my hand like I have a snack. Like I don't have actually have a snack and I'm really scared now. Put your hand down and then you won't look at it. <laughs> my doggy, don't look at it. All right, we need to, to that's a little bit of a close up <laughs> there. Uh, all right. We're, we're, we're sharing, sharing with doggo cam, but that's a little, that's kind of an extreme close up. Angel. There you go, Angel. Oh, you go, girl. You go, girl. You go, girl. Come back, Danny. Come back. I'm Come coming back. back. I'm coming back. I'm coming back. I'm here. All right. Sit. 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 All right. There we go. I'm just a girl. Oh, you can't pause. Sorry, All right. guys. I'm really excited about this dog, if you can already tell. Yes, Mr. On is in the room with us right now. So, All right. That's, uh, that's, that's doggo cam. Uh, you Thank you. figure it out in a minute. She's kind of a little dumb. No, she, she's sitting on, here, on, like, on the floor yeah, between right us. Here, oh, there you go. Oh, girl. oh, look at you. Look at your pretty face. You guys, look at that beautiful face. Look at this. Look at this. You could have this, but you don't have this. <laughs> All right. Anyway, let's get back to our horrible story. <laughs> we'll, we'll keep Doggo on cam as, as long as we can. Um, yeah, there we go. Just ignore me. I can't ignore you. You're making dog noise. I know she is. <laughs> All <laughs> I right. Made a single sound. All right. Here we go. So, so as as I was saying, like everybody's dying, but they didn't lose a single ship during all of this. Now they began at once they finally made it around Cape Horn. They began sailing north towards Peru because remember they were supposed to. They were supposed to uh, capture Lima. They were supposed to incite anti-Spanish uh, sentiment in Peru. Like the CIA. And, and bring, it, bring it over to England's side. Well, while they were doing that, the Pearl and the Severn, they were faster ships, so they were farther ahead, and they disappeared. They disappeared ahead. And after they disappeared, another huge, severe uh, hurricane basically hit the fleet. And... The Pearl and the Severn were presumed lost, but they had actually turned around and fled back around Cape Horn and fucked off back to England. They, Again? Yes. What do we do, everybody? What have we learned? What's the lesson, Jeff? Off you fuck. Yep. yep. Fuck off and lift. That's the <laughs> yeah. rule. Okay? Shit hits the fan, you'd leave. That's the rule. Yeah, so, <laughs> so the... The, uh, the the Pearl and the Severn, they basically just, they, they turned back around and they took off and headed back to England. Now, what we've got to do, yeah, the, seriously, the Zeno, the Stoic, uh, the, the ship's like, nah, bro. <laughs> mm -hmm. Neo Dark Matter, exactly. Fuck this shit. I'm out. 
I did promise a dance. Though. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll, we'll. Do we want to do that now and get it over with? We can wait till later. All right, we, we, we'll, to well, now's the time we're because we're gonna have to take a little Let's bit of a step back. With. Let's get it over with. And by get it over with, she means do it now. Let's do uh, it now. Uh, all right, hang on here. Someone donated hundred bucks. Yeah, we did. Thank you, Tank Rad, for. Promise to dance and a doggo cam. Uh, okay. hang on here. Let's uh, let's. For anyone that's like literally this watching this maritime Monday for the very first time, this this doesn't happen. This never uh, happens. This is not real. This is just a one-off thing. Happening? In the middle of like one of the most horrific stories I've ever told, Horrible this is what's happening. That Danny's probably not going to stay for uh, the rest of. Oh, you have to. Oh, I can't. There's that's only 45 terrible. more minutes. You said there's part three. Oh, well, I mean not for the whole thing, but like today, oh, there okay. part today is part, part one. I we only got 45 more. Minutes. Feeding the ducks begins right now, but. You got you got to do it right back over here. I'm in the dog yeah. Hold on, Jeff. You got to be in the middle. You got to be in the middle. Oh, do I? Okay. Yeah, you got to be in the middle of the. <laughs> People are like, what the fuck am I watching? They love it. How long People does this go it. on? It goes on for a minute. <laughs> Let me know when you're done. You gotta give it a minute. It's a hundred dollars. Dead bodies. Scurvy. Dysentery. Corpses. Upcoming cannibalism. Utter disrespect for the dead. That's what we're doing here. Okay, I love okay there we go. The right, end. We're done, we're done, we're All right. Done. Jesus, why did you make it awkward? It wasn't awkward. Well, I had to do something rather than no, just like sit you can't. there and be you just weird. sit there and be weird. I can't just Jesus, sit there and be weird. Jesus, no. Right, By the way, that, that, that biting thing that was, I was thinking about the delicious Korean chicken we had earlier that's still sitting there over on the bench. You just said food. Then, are, are you all happy? <laughs> you said scurvy. I hope you guys are happy. <laughs> Jeff's channel that, might be the most really fun channel for the daytime. Oh, yeah, we're getting there. Jesus, I don't want to stay for the cannibalism You'll discussion. That makes we'll, me sick. We'll, we'll probably end with cannibalism and uh, oh. and pick up where we where we leave off here. Is would Mr. you kill me if I checked out tonight? Right I, now? No. Yes, I, I would. the cannibalism part. Well, I'll let you know when it's coming and you can decide. Okay. Uh, I'll decide. Is, is Mr. On dying laughing? He totally had to leave the room just now. No. No. He, he, he didn't leave the room. He's he didn't like, leave the room now. He didn't care. He he lives with her twenty four seven. This is nothing new. This is this is a daily <laughs> occurrence. Almost almost every morning. Poor so man. that's what you get for the next person that donates another hundred dollars super chat. Cheers. Uh, Lord, wait wait a minute. God, wow. Uh, no one's clipping this. If you guys want to see this, come to my stream. Donate a hundred bucks. You get this yeah. every time. <laughs> Except it's exactly. much better. My hundred dollars super chat dance is far better it on is. my channel. Respectfully. Okay, so let's let's back up a little bit in our story. If you Before don't mind. the other two ships fucked up on yeah, Like right back to okay. the beginning. Yeah. Okay, I'm back. We're going back to the beginning. Okay. And uh, let's. Yeah, all right, we we we. All right, jump we over this. Scooch on over this way a bit here. Yeah. If I move, Dargy will. That's okay. Okay. We're, there we go. There. Now we, we're back. She, she pulled me over there to do her dance thing. I had to be in the middle. Now I don't. Okay, so let, let's. I said let's go back. Uh, the cannibalism cliffhanger. Exactly. That's what I'm setting this up for. Uh, Jesus, I don't want the cannibalism cliffhanger. I thought you said chicken in my head. I was so drunk. I thought you said chicken. I did. You did, right? No, but Damn it, I'm, Jeff. Sure, I'm sure people taste like chicken. Everything Jeff, tastes like chicken. don't say that. You're making me look All bad. Right. You have to so, edit that out. Well, if you'll remember. I'm going to feel bad. I feel bad for people. They're, they've been dead for like 300 years. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I still um, feel bad for them. They, I mean, think no. about it. These people fought through scurvy, massive diarrhea. Amongst other things, <laughs> among smelling other people with scurvy and diarrhea. Oh, we're just getting started. And oh, we're able to on. man these ships through treacherous no. weather by themselves while hundreds of men were dying and none of these ships went down. Like but that now, is such a testament to their strength. Let's talk about how really bad this was. I don't, this is let's not go, really bad. No, not, let's go back to the beginning. I don't want to go back. Back to before they set sail. Now, the people probably don't taste like pork. They just called it long pork euphemistically. Um, so in addition to all of these supplies, remember the 40 miles of rope, the 15 to 18,000 square feet of sails, all the animals and spare parts they needed. They also needed people. They needed men. Yeah. They needed men to do this. Now, 
Great Britain didn't have conscription at that time, and joining the Navy was voluntary, unless it wasn't, <laughs> which in this case, it kind of wasn't. So slaves. Uh, yeah, so that was the case with the wager. They needed around 2,000 men for this entire voyage. They ended up with like 1,800 something, but they didn't get enough volunteers. So the Navy sent out press gangs to press, which is basically kidnap people, into maritime service. And what they would do is they would go around to the bars, the, uh, the, the, the houses where people would stay, and they would look for any sign that the person was a seafarer or had any type of maritime experience at all. One Wait of the th- a second, so what's one of the signs? One of the things they would look for is like the round sailor's hat. If you were wearing a seaman's hat like this, they were like, aha, he's probably a seaman. You're now being pressed into service for the crown. <laughs> so wait a second. If you're a person of style and fashion, yeah. and you just so happen to enjoy right. the sailor's theme. And uh, you, they would look for like tar under the fe- under the under the fingernails because tar would be used to, to seal the decks. Don't and, they use tar for other things like ceilings or like yeah, but the, roofs? Yeah, but they, they would look for like hunched backs from people that uh, would work. Like with, carrying grain? Well, now see, this is the thing. You know, if they even just looked like someone that had married, whether they did or not, if they even just looked like someone who'd been a sailor, they would press them into service. Okay. F this shit, I'm out. Smart move every time. But after sending out the press gangs and forcing people into the situation, basically indentured servitude, basically slavery, they're basically kidnapping them. And like you know, we talk about being Shanghai, that's literally what being Shanghai was. Yeah, no. Because the, the you know, the, you know, the Portuguese and the British and whatnot, they would go to the they would go to the bars in Shanghai, because it was just out here, and they would just like literally knock people out and drag them onto their ships in sh- when they were like hanging out in Shanghai. So that's where like the term being Shanghai comes from. I mean educational, but no. Yeah. Um, but still, even after using these press gangs and kidnapping people, they still didn't have enough tattoos, exactly. Uh, they still didn't have enough people to man these ships. So to fill the wagers crew compliment, what they did, the Admiralty quite literally raided an old folks home. (laughs) Wait, what? You know what? They deserve what's coming to them. All the skinny all of the green gang, all of the whatever. They raided an infirmary for old people. And they forced people in their 60s and 70s into service on board the wager. Oh, my God. And, I mean, this included sick people, people with missing limbs. Dad, what show like, did you invite me to come like and do seven, a live stream with? 70-year-old people missing a leg. You're coming to fucking sea and going to war against the Spaniards. I love That's seniors. what they were doing. How could now, you invite me to the show? Now I'm really now, sad. Now, here's the thing. Here's the thing to note. In, in 1740, when this happened, in the 1740s, the life expectancy, the average life expectancy in England was 25 to 40 years old. Okay, but what are these old people going to do? Nothing. That's the right. point. So then why are they putting them on the ship just to be hungry? It gets worse. Because like literally, the, the life expectancy was 25 to 40 years old statistically. So they had people that were two times the statistical way, the statistical age of life expectancy. So people that if they would if they would have died at 25 and been reincarnated and died again, they would still be 10 years old in their third reincarnation when they're put pressed into service. Yeah, Jeff, get me off the ship. No way. I but, went off the ship. So here's I don't here's want the any thing. Of this. Here's the thing. Like I said, the life expectancy was 25 to 40, and they were pressing people from this infirmary in their 60s and 70s. The cook, the cook on board the wager was in his 80s. That's three times, three to four times longer than the average life expectancy. I mean, to be fair, Professor Lund yeah. was also our octogenarian yes. at the law school. Well, so. He wasn't when I was there. <laughs> he was a young guy. He was when I was, when I was there. Uh, cheers to that. Yeah. Cheers to Professor Lund. He was in his 80s when you were there? The resident octogenarian. That's how you uh, refer to me. himself. Yeah. Oh. God damn it. Wow, I'm old. Um, so anyway. Brilliant, man. Love, <laughs> love you, Professor. Tour in three. Jeff, Friday was a blast. Thank you. Danny, did you get your braid before your flight? Braid? Yes. Tour in three. They made the Japanese oh braid. Oh, my gosh. That answers no, your question. It's no, it's at my brother's house. I'm going to go pick it up. 
Now, Torn 3 knows where my brother lives. I'm sorry for saying that out loud. But yes, it is at that address, and I will go and pick it up. Thank you very much. And he's he's in the middle of making mine as we speak. It Thank is you. beautiful. If you guys haven't gone and checked him out, please go and check him out. Exactly. Torn 3. My, mine has a ship's wheel, a, a whiskey glass, a cigar, Godzilla, and Cthulhu on it. And how do you spell Torn 3? T-O-R-I-N 3. It's right there. So T is in... It's right there. Torin three. They can read T -O -R -I -N it. T-O-R-I-N three. The number three. Yes. Go and check it out, you guys. Thank you so much for the super chat. Yes, seriously. Thank you. So, so anyway, they've uh, oh, the, the dogs the dog is the dog will come back. The dog's Maybe. fucked he's, off. So. He's playing with Mr. On. Yeah, so Mr. we'll, we'll, we'll take the them. We'll take yeah. Pied Piper of dogs. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll take him off screen until he wanders back on because because we can't turn the camera because Mr. On is not a, a camera person. He's so. not a camera person. Okay. We've got the we've, we've got people being old basically people stolen out of an old stolen. folks home. I am not okay with people any people missing this. limbs. The cook in his eighties. I didn't volunteer for this. And so on on this vessel, you you have this mix of poor's, free blacks, nobility, uh, you know. Old people, infirm people, people missing limbs, wealthy people, all they're all put together. And a lot of them were sick, wounded, and old. So that you're and they're trying to make this this shipboard life work in these crowded conditions with 500 marines on the scurvy. Yeah, and on all of these things. And the poop. Now, one guy who's very important to this story is a is the gunner. John Bulkley was his name. John Bulkley, he was recognized as probably the most capable seaman on the ship. Oh, I'm not offended by calling being yeah. called the gunner anymore. Yeah. As a gunner, he had officer rank. Uh, navigation was technically the responsibility of the master. Uh, mm -hmm. it was, it, there's like the cap. Usually, you know, I mean, nowadays the captain is the master, but they had the captain who was essentially appointed noble position. Uh, and then you had the master that was the guy in charge of the ship. But, uh, I mean, navi navigation was, would normally be the responsible responsibility of the master who was named Thomas Clark, but he, along with most of the officers on board, they were held in thinly disguised contempt by acting Captain Cheap, because he didn't like anybody. But everybody liked John Bulkley, and he okay. was sort of recognized as the, the authority, the, the, the most qualified dude there is. And uh, the do doggos have wandered back in, so. <laughs> they have both joined us. Yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see what I'm we can do with them here. I'm gonna check out. There's only 30 minutes left. Okay, but I'm really drunk, and we're talking about cannibalism. No, we're not talking about cannibalism Seniors. yet. Seniors, okay. I'll let you know. <laughs> why are we, why I'll let you know that? before we do. So, oh, my God. Now, again, they all came around the the the, the around Cape Horn, and uh, we're almost to the shipwreck part of this thing here. They, they came around Cape Horn. It took them a month to do that. They lost hundreds and hundreds of people from the entire fleet. And as they came around the bottom of Cape Horn, the wager thought it was farther west than it was, but then they realized that, oh, we're, we're too far east. We're too close to you know, Argentina and you know, Patagonia, so we need to sail further west. You don't want to be too close to Patagonia. Yeah, so they, they sailed up the coast. Then they sailed west, and they hoped they're going to meet up with the fleet at the next rendezvous point. Chile? Uh, well, I'm not sure where the next rendezvous Somewhere point Somewhere around was, there, okay. But yeah. And while they're sailing and trying to navigate, up the, you know, like west of South America. They're trying to do this. And at 9 a.m. on 13th of May, 1741, John Cummins, who was a carpenter, he went forward to inspect the wager's chain plates, where, you know, they were the anchor sit and whatnot. Hey, there you stop rolling around on the camera. <laughs> so he, he, goes to the, he goes forward to the front part of the ship to check on the chains. Uh, on the chain plates. And while he's there, he thought he caught a fleeting glimpse of land to the west of the ship. So he thought he signed it. He sighted, la sighted land to the west of the ship. And if you're coming up the west coast, That's not a good the sign. land should be on your east, right? not the west. Right. So he sees he sees that there's he thought he saw land to the west of the ship, which is exactly the opposite side where they should have seen land. So either they're turned around or he's about to hit rocks. Or it doesn't exist. Or doesn't it, or yeah. it's the all the scurvy and the yeah. diarrhea. So 
he tells uh, Lieutenant Baines, a guy named Lieutenant Baines, who was also on the deck, he told, he reported to Baines, he thought, I think I saw some land off to the west of the ship. And uh, Lieutenant Baines, he didn't see anything. Right. So he didn't report it to, to uh, acting Captain Cheap. He didn't report it. He ignored it. Because how could there possibly be land to the west of them? Because they're going up the west coast of South America. Can I ask a question? Yes. How often does that happen in these these cases? Not much. Cases Not where much. someone reports something and someone doesn't report it up the chain. Quite a bit. That's how uh, just over the hill here in Kim Hay. That's how one of the uh, that's how one of the airplane crashes happened here in Busan. It's very common in air <laughs> in air travel. That's why I was curious yes. whether or not that happens very often in naval travel as well. Ex exactly. Now, um, right. Hold on, everyone. We are going to demonstrate something. In 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 just a quick second, I'm still trying to get Yoda to stop laying on the, the fucking the dog camera is tripod. Moving the camera and the tripod. It is not us, and there is no earthquake. Although there is a risk of tsunamis right. here. Who knew? There's <laughs> yeah. tsunami warning signs, and they teach you where to go and everything. It's great. Well, Lucina Chima says you can get false land sightings even today because of weather conditions. Oh, Unfortunately, sense. this was not. A false land sighting. Oh, it sounds like rocks. What happened? What happened was they were coming up on the east, on the west side of South America. And the guy said, wait a minute. I think I see some land off to the west, off to the west side. It turns out that unfortunately they had entered a very large bay. Oh. And uh, let me... Let me bring up this. I, I lied and said With we only had waves. one visual. This is our second visual of the day. Yay, visuals. We love visuals. This, uh, let's see if we let me make sure we can see this here. This, this right here is the bay they entered. So when they enter the bay we're, we're along this cursor, he goes, oh, my God, I see land to the west. And it wasn't reported because they thought they were way over here on the left side going up. But they had actually come in like this. So they're not just going to hit rocks. They're going to like dead into rocks. Like yes. face first, face planet into some rocks. Yes. And when I say rocks, I mean an entire effing island. Yeah. So yeah. Well, well that's, right. that's the entire land mass of South America. Right. Right. So yeah, they are, they're here in this bay. Jeez. They, and they when I say here. great, I mean horrible, everyone. Yeah. Horrible. This is a yeah. horrible tragedy. So that's, that's what happened. <laughs> They they get in here and he's actually seeing land off to what he thinks is the west. I mean, he's not wrong. So yeah, unfortunately, that's a. Th I mean, it is west from him. He is correct. He is seeing land to the west. So so what ha what happens is the is the predictable. The captain like eventually. They, everybody sees the land. They're approaching the land, and the captain calls out for all hands to turn the ship about. They're in a panic, and in this panic, Captain Cheap, he slips on a ladder, and he dislocates his shoulder, and he's taken out of commission and forced to uh, retreat to his cabin, and uh, he's, out, he's just out of commission. Captain Cheap is out of commission while they're trying to steer this thing out of the bay. Shocker. It's yeah. almost like you didn't get your money's worth. And or you did. <laughs> In the, it wouldn't be a Maritime Monday if it didn't get worse. It got worse. Uh, During this, a horrible, horrible hurricane starts blowing in the area while they're trying to get out of this area. So kidnapping seniors, yeah. scurvy abound, massive diarrhea. Okay, here's the thing I didn't tell you, but I'll tell you now. And now a giant hurricane. Like some of these old people were so old and infirm, according to reports, I don't they know. would literally have to hoist them in their uh in in their like cots and things into the ship they would literally have to hoist them in their Why hospital beds into the ship them? um yeah so wait the, did they bring them for regulatory purposes because this sounds like somebody who's trying to get around like a yeah i have a 200 men limit and i have hit the 200 <laughs> men requirement it could be uh, <laughs> oh but anyway anyway what so the there's hell? This, there's this terrible storm going on during all of this and they're fighting against this. But again, the problem was that even though they have this severe storm, 
the wager itself was completely worn out. It was nearly disabled from all of the storms going around Cape Horn coming up and all, all the, the, typh the hurricanes they'd gone through. <laughs> I just think and of all like people with dementia and Alzheimer's. Pretty much. They wake up yeah. just terrified yeah. every single day. Now at this point, of the roughly 200 men that left Great Britain on board the wager, about, only about a dozen were able to work. A shocker. Only about a dozen of, of the 250 men had were, were able to work at this point. I mean, and they what would you expect with like 50 of the men being in, oh, infirmed with and, dementia? And they couldn't turn the ship around fast enough. And on the morning of 14 May 1741, they crashed into the rocks off an island on, of an island off the west coast of South America in a remote, remote part of Patagonia. Uh, and it, let me bring this graphic up because there's something I want to show you. Uh, let's, all right, I've got way too many windows open for my own good. Right, here we go. Your dogs uh, are so loud. It's remarkable. I know they do. We, we can embiggen this further. This is the bay they went into. They went into this giant bay. And while they're trying to turn the ship around, they collided with this island right here. This one is outlined. That was the island they collided with. You can see it outlined here in red. Uh, let me bring this over here so I can but do this together. But that's south. How did they get turned around that well, be, well, because they were trying to turn the ship around. And it takes a long time oh, to, to turn the ship around. And so I they, see, because they saw yeah, the, the yeah, land to the west yeah, and, and then around. all the storm. And then they're trying to turn out yeah. and they can't. Now, okay. this island here is now what is known as Wager Island. <laughs> it's Isla Wager. Uh, it's... The, they named, uh, they named the island after where the shipwreck occurred. I mean, good for them. Yeah, so good they, for the people of the wager yeah, ship who had to suffer. I just, this is the most heartbreaking case. Why did you bring me on this case? You just happen to be here. So this is this is Isla Wager. This is where the accident occurred. Now, you'll notice the island next to it is called Byron Island. There's a reason for that we'll talk oh, to in just a minute. Oh, because there was a Byron ship that collided uh, with that we'll, island too? We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in just a quick second. So once the, once the, uh, once the ship hits Wager Island, which was at that point just a, an abandoned rock. <laughs> uh, a, I mean, the, you know, the ship starts to collapse. The, the masts fall. A two-ton anchor drops through the hull uh, and it puts a gigantic hole in the bottom of the ship. Water starts pouring in. It, it, then it, you know, it gets washed up on other rocks. The, and the ship starts to break apart. And the people that were too sick to get out of their hammocks, they just drowned. Oh, my God. I mean, there's almost like a sweet relief to that, yeah. right? Like, yeah. could you imagine being dragged all over the world with dementia and scurvy? Yeah. And having to smell that every day, like other people's dementia and scurvy. And Can you smell dementia? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was just, just messing with you. Uh, you. You said smell other people's dementia. No. Um, <laughs> Well, apparently, if you smell everyone can the dementia smell rock is cooking before they right. see them. So maybe. So anyway, as I was mentioning, the, the next island is now called Isla Byron. And there's a, there's a good reason for that. We don't need the graphic anymore, so we'll remove that. This uh, There's a good reason this is called the Isla Byron or Byra, Byron Island. Just so you guys know, I had no idea what I was signing <laughs> I, up for tonight. I, I, and I, wonder, I wasn't like, planning on times. any of this. Now, the, the reason this is called Byron Island is there was a 16-year-old midshipman named John Byron that was that he had volunteered to take part on this romantic journey to become an admiral of the fleet. He was this young boy that wanted to go through the ranks and become somebody important. And it He's a kid. He eventually it's becomes a minor. He eventually becomes Lord Admiral of the, of the Royal Navy. I mean, good for but him. But he also is the grandfather of the renowned poet Lord Byron. Oh, so he lives. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, and I'm he, liking this story. Yes, he's 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 the grandfather of uh, Lord Byron, the poet. Oh, nice. Who Good was contemporaries with uh, with Mary Shelley and uh, other people? So yeah, he he was the, he became the grandfather of Lord Byron, the poet. All right. So yay, there's a happy ending. Somewhere. Yay, someone lives. <laughs> <laughs> One of the few. <laughs> One of the, the sixteen year old lives. Yeah. yeah. Go figure. Um. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Lucina Chima says 16-year-old midshipman. He's pretty old for a midshipman. Yeah. Um, there were there were 
there were kids as young as six years old. But Shit. just the right age for a certain actor who I So they had people from six years old to 80s <laughs> on this show. That, yeah, that's a... Speak about... Cult okay, talking about cancel culture, can we just talk about that for a second? How absurd is it? How many people get canceled? Yet one of the actors who I love the most notoriously goes for underage or young, very that young That doesn't people. narrow it down. Right. That's what I'm saying. DiCaprio? Maybe. Mm, maybe. All right, yeah. Who is going to be playing Captain Cheap, apparently, in the movie version of The Wager out next year. How fitting. Kidnapping old people, yeah. taking 16-year-olds on trips around the world. Well, they were men. So. I mean, like that's any yeah. different. Uh, so, anyway, of the... Originally, around 250 people that were on board the wager after the greatest outbreak of scurvy in human history, other diseases, Cape Horn, the shipwreck, about 146 crew, including Captain Cheap and John Byron, survived. That's remarkable. So about 114, 104 people died during the journey from Great Britain to this island. So more people lived than died? Barely, yeah. That is <laughs> remarkable. And and where did they stay? They just hang oh, out on the island. No, no, that's where, some... that, that's that's where the that's where the bad part of the story starts. Oh, I don't want to know the bad yeah. part. Yeah, this We're, is already a bad yeah. part of this. The whole story is a bad story. I don't want to know. The John worst Gordon part. says, "Danny, thank you so much for the super chat. By the way, Danny didn't know what she signed up for. Just like the old people on that ship." <laughs> Yes, I have kidnapped Danny and Mr. On, and I'm holding them hostage here. It's true. Yeah. I just about all of this. I just about this whole story. This is the worst, worst bedtime story I've ever heard. Yeah, this isn't a good the bedtime The worst. Story. I came here for drinks and alcohol. Wait, those are the same thing. Drinks and cigars, and this is what I'm getting. <laughs> Stories of kidnapped Alzheimer's patients who are apparently going to be eaten, allegedly. I Who got knows? I got here late. Why were there old people? There were old, and again, they were uh, kidnapped. We don't yeah. know the reason. As as we as we mentioned, the life expectancy in England at that was time was twenty five to forty years old. They they took volunteers to come. When they didn't get enough volunteers, they went around the bars and pubs and and residency areas and hotels and whatnot, and they basically kidnapped anyone who looked like they had any seafaring ability or experience whatsoever even that wasn't enough to fill so then they went and they literally kidnapped people in their 60s and 70s people twice the statistic age <laughs> life expectancy they they were missing limbs they were infirm they literally kidnapped them from an old folks home and drug them on some of them they they hoisted them in their sick beds into because they couldn't walk up into the ship on their own power so yeah they basically just kidnapped old people from an infirmary to uh fulfill their their numbers quota i was uh, i was yeah. morse coding through eye blinking sos so uh the captain john byron and 144 other people for a total of 106, 146 of the crew, the original 250 people on the wager survived this shipwreck. And they found themselves stranded on this island off the west coast of Patagonia. Now, it didn't take long for shit to go really south really quickly. Again, just like, F the shit I'm yeah. out. F out. Well, that's what a lot of these people did. And that's the that's problem. That's exactly what I do. Jump in the ocean. Be done. Well, Call it so, a day. Let so the fate take me where it takes me. Instantly, as soon as the ship wrecked, some of the crew broke into the spirits room where they had all the, because uh, when the other ship, when the first ship fucked off and went back to England. The smart one, the industry. They, all of the rum <laughs> was put on board the wager. So <laughs> You don't so, have to worry about the rum being gone if you live. Yeah. So the, the crew, some of the crew members, they broke into the spirits room and they got drunk on as much rum as they could possibly consume. Like you do. They armed themselves with the guns because if you remember like from the beginning, the wager, its job was to carry arms <laughs> to be used for the, the land raiding parties. So they oh, got drunk, right. Right. they armed themselves and they began looting. They went into, you know, they, they went into, they raided all the officers quarters. They began dressing up in like officers clothes. They like cosplay officers and they started fighting. So they went on full on cuckoo. Yes. There's about six of them that did that. I mean, I'd go cuckoo yeah. too. So at that point I'd probably go. <laughs> Rock says, Danny's blinking torture like a Vietnam POW. <laughs> Maybe. I uh, know cannibalism didn't start within hours. Spoiler alert, within a couple of weeks. 
<laughs> even though this oh, is one of the most, sweet. well, even though this ship had one of the largest food supplies of any ship in the fleet. Um, but, yeah, but yeah. wasn't it sunk at this point? Yeah, basically? but they, they still could get stuff off. I, uh, that's right, because they were breaking into the captain's yeah. quarters and whatnot. Okay. So about six of these guys were doing this. And the other 140 men and officers, they took to the uh, the smaller the lifeboats and whatnot, and they made it sh safely to shore from the rocks where the ship could. And then the following day, May 15th of 1741, uh, the, the the ship basically started taking on water amidships. And again, as we mentioned earlier, many of the people that were too sick to leave the ship just drowned. They just drowned where they were in their hammocks. Um, and when we say many, we mean seniors. We mean yeah. the infirmed, dementia-ridden, aka senile, yeah. Alzheimer's-ridden seniors who had no choice in any of this. Right. Victims. That's the word we use, victims. And now a bosun named John King, he was like he was a particularly rebellious and difficult individual. He and a few of his, of his followers were left on board the vessel by Captain Cheap. Captain Cheap told them to stay on the vessel and to defend it against anyone who attempts to uh, sail back to the ship and loot it for goods. It, there's a reason. What? Okay. There's a reason. Okay, go on. Go on. I'm waiting. So, I'm waiting. So they're on. There's the there's the six six or so guys left on the ship with the bosun John King to defend it and protect it against people. But the other 140 people that made it to shore from the original 250 crew, their prospects were really really desperate. They had no shit. Because I mean they're, they're, they've Sorry, shipwrecked. <laughs> like we haven't been doing that the entire. <laughs> I'm just trip. saying. They, they they were shipwrecked far under the southern latitudes. At the beginning of winter, with little food on a desolate island, without resources to sustain, and the, the crew were dangerously divided, and a lot of them were blaming Captain Cheap for their predicament. I mean, kinda. And I, the island is barren; it's freezing, and there's only there's only a few clams, and weirdly some wild celery. Oh, okay. And like, I mean, that makes sense because they like farm in marshes and you can find them there. Yeah. And so yeah, there, okay. there was like some wild celery growing and they sure. ate all of the celery they could get their hands the on, which as vitamin C yes! cured <laughs> <Yes>! their scurvy. <laughs> no more scurvy, bitches. Hell yeah. yeah. Woo, 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 woo. So they're thinking it's like a magic plant. It because, is a magic plant. Because it cured <laughs> their scurvy. Who knew? It tastes like dirt. Right. S saves you from scurvy. Exactly. And then eat they had your like, celery, folks. And they had some seaweed to eat. So yes. Was, so it was basically like clams, celery, and seaweed. Hell yeah. That's a ton of minerals. And, uh, and protein. Mm -hmm. I'd take that any day. That sounds delicious. Very, yes, Tilly says, ironically, scurvy, uh, no, scurvy free meat, scurvy free meat. Ah! Uh, <laughs> and Agony Goose says, celery, famously calorific. Yeah. Like, celery is one of the very few foods that you consume more Zero calories cal eating. No, you consume more calories eating it than is in the celery. Correct. Negative uh, so, yeah. calories. And yeah, also, but, you lose part of yeah. your soul. It's yeah. fine. Well, speaking, it's ironic that you should say you lose part of your soul. Oh, God damn it. Because they're on this desolate island, which they only have a few clams, some celery, and some seaweed, which I they mean, quickly, get me through. they quickly eat through all of this. Sure. And one of the, uh, one of the crewmen on board in his writings described the island as being the place where a man's soul goes to die. So the celery. So I, ironic, it's you would say that. It, it was literally. I don't think it's irony. I think it's consequential. I mean, <laughs> it's just you have celery, it, your soul dies. It That's wasn't it described works. as a place where a man goes to die. Cool. He described it as a place where the man's soul goes to die. I called it right. You did. I called this. Now problems, as I said, began almost instantly. Oh sh sure, You're almost instantly. Celery. And clam. And the, the, the fruit, the fruit, the, the crew, the crew was frightened <laughs> by Captain Cheap because he was a huge, imposing, angerific man. Yeah, he sounds like a psycho. He was Scottish. That's all he's we need Scottish, to Scottish, there you go. They're frightened of him because he's Scottish and acts like I'm one. I'm Scottish, I get to say this. Me too. Uh, the, the, and so they're, they're also angry with him for putting him in this situation. And, of course, they went, literally, they went Lord of the Flies. Uh. They lost all sense of order and decorum. The, the crew was able to, and they broke out into like basically three separate cliques. 
three separate groups. And they were able to uh, find some land and to set up camps in separate areas. And they used bits and pieces of the ship to sort of build a little city while they were there. That's how much wood is on these things. Sort Wait, of build so up a little another, town. Okay, they built a town and they... Well, like, I mean, it's not like, woohoo, look at like a saloon. It was like, you know, shelters for people. Why? Uh, okay, can I ask a yeah. question real quick? Why did they not use the wood from that same ship to ferry over to another island? That'll happen in part two. Oh, okay. This is that'll that'll happen in part. But two. hopefully before the people eating, right? Anyway, let's continue with our story. Wait, <laughs> I'm in the people eating part. I don't no, want to not be in yet. The people eating part. Not, not yet. No, I'm not in the people eating part. No, you, you gotta tell me. I, I, you I will tell you. Me when I will tell you. I, okay. All right, I'll okay. tell you when we get to the cannibals. Okay. Part. Yeah, daily quick bites. We'll get there in a bit. Um, let's see here. Uh, Probably. Wait, what? Why did they resort to eating the people just, before just, they ferry? Just hang tight. Okay. So, <laughs> they've all set up camps in these separate areas, in these little cliques. They've broken up into groups. And basically, those that oppose the captain, those that are with him, and you know, the other. So, so and you know, I mean, so many people, are, they're literally blind with malnutrition. Others are roaming the island, just trying to find a way off of the island. They might be blind anyway with cataracts. Yeah, or just, just be really old. <laughs> oh, come on. What the now, hell? The, the only time, there's only one time the crew attempted to go back to the ship, and that was to try to gather some food. However, that proved to be a little more difficult than they had planned because, as you remember, uh, the captain had left the six guys on there to and guard they, them, oh, to guard them. And <laughs> when they got there, the, the crew, <laughs> yeah, the, 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 the people that were told by the captain to guard the food began shooting back because they had a lot of the arms there. Oh my gosh. And that, thought. Well, that's when, that's when the people that went out there to get the food realized that the captain wasn't going to share the rest of the food with them. So this is like revenge human eating. Yeah, so they attempted to kill Captain Cheap. Did they <laughs> successfully kill Captain Unfortunately, Cheap? Unfortunately, no. But God what, damn it. what they tried they tried to blow him up. Oh, okay. <laughs> After they realized that he wasn't going to share the food with them, they attempted to blow him up by laying a trail, just like all, just like straight out of Bugs Bunny. They tried to <laughs> lay a, like a trail of gunpowder to his tent. <laughs> yeah, and they went, <laughs> but apparently he survived. They tried to blow him up with like the the the, 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 the literally the cartoon line of gunpowder oh to the gunpowder barrel in his tent, uh, but he survived. Now Thank you do. Now, Wait, how did he survive though? He wasn't in the tent, or it just wasn't. Or a, did he, he, go he, off. he it just survived. That efficient it was 1734. They didn't really detail how he okay. survived. They okay, just said I'm he there. survived. I'm there. Um, but later, King, who was the guy that was left on the ship to protect the stores, he decided he didn't want to be on the ship anymore. Okay. And uh, they weren't sending anybody out to get him. So to kind of get Captain Cheap's attention, he. Uh, Mr. King fired a four pound cannon from the wager towards the captain's hut. <laughs> Which, why, why the hell wasn't this done day one? That's what I want to know. He's like, I, I, I don't want to be here on the ship anymore. Can I come to land? And nobody was coming to get him. So he fired a four pound cannonball See? at the captain's hut to try to get Captain Cheap's attention and to induce someone to come out and get his, him and his friends off the wreck. See, this is why my ancestors <laughs> survived. Okay, One, they knew, mm -hmm. they already knew, if shit gets heavy, you get out. Okay, That's mm -hmm. rule number one. Right. Two. Did they drop a piano on <laughs> Two, it was a big anvil. That's what it was. Two, no one is above reproach when it comes to survival. Okay, you gotta survive. You gotta you gotta do what you gotta do to survive. My ancestors made it to America because they were the crazy mother effers who said, F this shit, I'm out. I'm not doing this. All you people like your little village. Great. You stay here. I'm going to America. I don't care how yeah. many people I have to kill. I don't know, care <laughs> what I have to do. I will survive. That mentality will keep you through the hardest of times. You need to survive because if you don't survive, you don't get beautiful little great, 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 great granddaughters like M. Wong. Right. Yeah. And David, who's been a member for nine months. Thank you, Dan. Says, Danny, find sort of a silver lining, Jeff, and then it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
Exactly right. Exactly right. Thank you, David. <laughs> and legendary racing. Thank you so much for the $5 super chat. Going to visit grandpa at the hospital and they respond with, sorry, he passed in a boat wreck in South America. Wait, what? <laughs> Okay, you you win the chat of the day. That's horrible. <laughs> Legendary racing oh. wins. He wins the chat of the day so far. That sounds like when they used Grandma's body remains for like Raytheon explosives. Did you hear about this? this what lawsuit? No. Yeah, someone donated their body, so people donate. Oh, their I bodies did hear about that. Science. Yes. I'm like, but well, we didn't like mean for whole... that. <laughs> We didn't mean for like blowing up. There's a whole laboratory in New Mexico oh, and they yes. were like blowing up grandma and like it's horrible. See, you're born for Maritime Monday. No, I'm not. Fist bump. I'm fist not bump. Fist don't oh don't leave the fist I bump disavow. hanging. You I were disavow. the one that brought up the story of blowing up grandma. I disavow. Oh, whatever. All right. So anyway, they anyway, horrible story. Yeah. Don't 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 Donate your body to science unless your loved ones and those who survive you understand exactly what that means and to what extent that can go to. Um, and also make sure that you understand where the body or where your family members remains right. end up at the end of the day. Exactly. Okay. Because otherwise mm. you're going to have a hard time. Right. Okay. Now. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Don't snort. <laughs> It's so funny. funny. Where's Grandma? This She's over funny. there, and over there, and there, and there. <laughs> I just found all of this. I just found uh, all yeah, of this. Tales of the Dutch, of the Dutch East India Company. Are good. Yeah, so go back and like listen to like the Batavia you know and things like that. I say this right. on my channel all the time. I need to say this real quickly. Listen, everybody. Sometimes you laugh because things are genuinely funny. Like, like, like blowing up grandma. <laughs> funny <laughs> that is in and of itself sometimes you laugh funny sometimes you laugh because you're nervous and sometimes you laugh because people around you are laughing and you're nervous and you're drunk okay it doesn't mean that you agree with the statement or that you find it objectively amusing i think it's all objectively amusing. but let me be clear it's okay to laugh and to disavow okay thank you thank you you're I welcome. just needed to make that PSA very, very clear but, to everyone in the future watching this, waiting mm -hmm. to cancel me. Please be aware. I don't find it funny or amusing. I find it tragic. I find it funny. And but I am terribly drunk right now. You are not. And Jeff is hilarious. And I'm <clears> also <throat> nervous. Right. So there we have that. We And we're, we're going to wrap up here in just about two we minutes. We will wrap up very quickly here because I am terribly inebriated. <sighs> exactly. So, and it says, uh, okay. King, King, who was on the ship, Nothing is firing is okay. the, the, the four-pound cannon at the captain's hut to try to get his attention. That, hey, hey. The me, smart ones. Let me out the they island. They should have done that a month ago. Well, he kind of liked How it. How many there, months was this in? This, this, this is not even two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> we're not even two weeks in yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this, like day one. Yeah, this is like week okay. one and a half. Okay. And so essentially <laughs> that about, was funny. That was a joke. That was laughing. About two weeks after they were marooned, two weeks after they're marooned okay. on the island, uh, the men had basically decided to become mutineers and cannibals. Oh. And that, that's a good place to end for Let's today, end I think. There. Let's yeah, end because yeah, they, they first started off eating the corpses that were washing oh, no, up on the shore. No, no, plug, no, plug your no, ears. Plug your ears. Uh, I don't, I'm, in, I'm not in the no. story. Here. There's only three. There's two. There's three sentences we're going to read about cannibalism. All right. So they're like only a <laughs> She's like literally standing off screen. Only a couple of weeks. This is what people come here for. They come to Maritime Monday for the oh, cannibalism. Sorry. So like only a couple of weeks after, like literally two weeks after they're marooned on on the like they start talking about mutiny and they decide uh, to become cannibals. Yes, fine young cannibals, J.K.D. Buck. Uh, <laughs> they they first started off with eating the corpses that were washing up on shore from the wreck. So they weren't making new they corpses. They couldn't fucking catch eels or fish. Or hey, something. in or out. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, Here's what I want to understand. Well, okay, wait, make let, it let make me, sense. Me, Why let, couldn't they catch eels or fish or something? They're not as delicious. You're disgusting. I know. You're uh, anyway, so, I am ashamed. So they were I they, disavow that. They started out eating the corpses that were washing up on the shores from the wreck. Well, then uh, they started to dig up some of the people they had buried. Yeah, to, bro, to, to, I'm to out. Eat I'm them. out again. I'm out. And one of the crew members. 
He told the story of how a cabin boy was found eating the liver of one of the dead shipmates. With fava beans and a nice Chianti. <laughs> okay, that's the end of the cannibal part of the story for today. Am I back? Yes, you can come back now. Okay, thank you. I don't want to be a part of the cannibal story. I was just part of the fun story. I thought this was going to be a fun sea time jaunty adventure yeah. where maybe no, some we're done. Maybe there's some little like shipwreck, like a minor shipwreck. We're right? done. You got the you know like the cabin some, boy. Some, some like helicopter comes and rescues everybody, yeah. and everybody's hunky dory. That's the story I was told before I joined yeah. the stream. There, there was a severe lack of helicopters in 1741. Um, but yeah, I did know 1741, which in English or in American math is 35 years prior to the American Revolutionary yeah. War. And so, I mean, basically, like, hey, cabin boy, what's up? He's like, hey, just live with father, dude, bro, nasty, that's nasty. Um, so, anyway, they're trying to survive through any means necessary, which <sighs> Danny doesn't want me to mention. No, I don't want you to mention cannibalism and Captain Cheap aptly named we've decided nasty captain, cheap captain cheap he insists on being a captain and ruling over the people with an iron fist like a dumbass as a captain he just got land. shot at yeah and uh i mean that was a whole deal it was like, like at that point i'd be like hey guys you know what i have some sardines in the back they and, like a few they're dry yeah. but they're delicious we can have some sardine jerky and it, like it was legitimately and and this is something we're going to talk about in part two during all of this horrible stuff that's going on. They were literally having these in-depth philosophical dis discussions and debates about the nature of man and applicable laws. It's like, when does the well, law... you're eating people. Yeah, when does the law of the sea end? Even though we're here on land, are we still under the jurisdiction of the captain and, Amer and maritime law grounds? Or <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah. I recall in torts class, there was something about cannibalism and like the one guy who survived. Like, the, do you recall this? There's like five seamen. They end up on a boat and there's young one, young man who survives. He gets arrested and charged with cannibalism and murder. And it turns out that he says, look, no, I actually just ate the people who had passed before me. And they said that there's some sort of necessity. Well, there, there, I mean, that's one thing we and talked because about. Because of emergency law. Like there's something about emergency that negates yes, the liability. Yes, that, that's, uh, that's the case of the minionette. I see. Um, which is is very. We've, we've talked about the That's mignonette the case, a right? lot. The, on here. the small cake, the small boat yeah, I mean, that ends up in the middle of nowhere. Like what the mignonette was, like it off was, the U.S. coast, right? It was. Uh, it was kind of the inspiration for Moby Dick. Okay. And uh, you know, there were it's a whaling ship. The whaling ship was attacked by a whale. It broke up, and four people, including a a a unfortunate young person, young man named mm. uh, Richard Parker. That is ship. that is it because and, it was Professor Lund who taught me this case. And uh, this case. Richard Parker was there, and they they uh, they drew lots over who who should be, you know, they sacrificed basically. Um, right. And things didn't work out the way the most of the people <laughs> on the ship wanted. But this and, is according to the single singular yeah. survivor. No, there 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 was there was he was the singular victim. Richard Parker. Was. Uh, like, I see. It's like what I mean, and, and and that actually set a very very big precedent, like you're talking about. And interestingly yeah. enough, like the, the kid's name was Richard Parker, uh, which was also the name of the tiger. It was the name of the tiger in the uh, you know, life of Pi. The tiger on the ship was was Richard Parker. I remember that. Yeah, so I, I actually liked that yeah. movie. He was named Richard Parker after that guy. Okay. And weirdly enough, Edgar Allan Poe, 20 years before the Minionette disaster, wrote a story about a poor, unfortunate ship that was involved in an accident and four men escaped in a lifeboat. And one of the men was named Richard Parker, who was killed and eaten by the other crew members. Fascinating. Edgar Allan Poe wrote a story that contained about this, the minionette uh, about this kid's, happened. this exact name, Richard Parker being the victim of cannibalism and murder uh, 20 years before it happened. Uh, but yeah, that, that, what, that's what demons, became, baby. I'm telling yeah, you careful. They, they They'll rescued eat you. Yeah, they they I mean those people they turned to cannibalism again within days of being on on the ocean and what happened was they decided that Richard Parker was the one to go so while he slept they stuck a knife in his jugular killed him they started by trying to drink his blood to keep their liquids up then they started to eat him and when they came back they were court martialed and that's when we got the I don't maritime remember the details of this Yeah, we we got the maritime law saying in extremis in extreme situations you it is not a crime to 
consume the body of a dead seaman, See, of a dead seafarer. That's but, interesting. You tell the story that way. I don't remember yeah, it happening. But the, the, I mean, the, the point of that problem was they helped him to die. <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Because yes. I, my recollection is is that he either was near death or dead. Yes. And to put him out of his misery, like as a mercy type killer. Yeah, no, it was sort of like better him than us kind of a thing. And they I, they I murdered don't him in his that sleep. part. Yeah. But uh, what I do recall is I do recall he was either dead yeah. or near death, and that they had decided to eat him. And in my recollection, he was the only survivor. So I'm glad yeah. to know. Yeah, and that was that was the wrong. takeaway from that. It is okay. It is, is that it's okay as long it, as it's uh, yeah, necessary. As, as long as they're already dead. If right. you, okay, it is illegal, dead, right? It That's is illegal to say we're starving to death. We can't we're going them. to kill you sure. so that we can survive. That we is can't yeah, murder right, them, but as, right. if they're already dead, exactly. it's okay. Okay, then I remember yes. the rule. Yes. You guys, when you become attorneys and law students, yes. remember the rule. That's the important part. Fact pattern right. is kind of nebulous. So, no, just kidding. Fact anyway. pattern also important, but also remember back to the, the cabin boy who's eating the liver of his dead shipmate. Okay. Um, they're trying to survive. Captain Cheap. You know, he insists on applying, you know, basically admiralty law and being the commander of this group of people who are now on land. He's and they're, an they're having a big philosophical debate about where does it, when, where and when does his authority over us as a captain end and where does our authority as free people Give begin? them the biscuits. Have you guys ever had a sailor's biscuit? It's well, a rock. It's an effing rock. Just give it to them. What, what are you going to do with it? Well, here's the problem with that. And this, this is, we're, we're almost ready to wrap this up. Please. So they're trying to do all of this. And uh, Captain Cheap, he's showing when they're when he knows that they're having these debates and whatnot, and they're rebelling against his iron fist rule as a captain, he shows really how ill-equipped he was to deal with the situation. Uh, it didn't help that he was really insecure, really hot-tempered, and his feelings took control of his actions a lot, and it made it worse than ever. Uh, and he went as far as punishing those who didn't listen by whipping them, uh, whipping men that were caught stealing, refusing to dress their wounds, which resulted in them dying from infections. How did he not die already? This is like the Joffrey yeah. of the story, where you're just yes, sitting there exactly. going like, how? How are you not dead already? Well, I mean, he, he felt like being the tough guy. He felt like toughness would control the crew. Okay, but rule it, number two. Rule number one, yeah. F this shit out of my mouth. Yeah. Rule number two, I ain't nobody's bitch. Okay, that's the rule number two of the story. If you feel like someone's bullying you and everyone around you to the point where you guys are getting whipped, having untreated wounds, kidnapping people with Alzheimer's and dementia, at some point you have to turn around and say, I ain't nobody's bitch and fight the F back. I'm sorry, this is insane. Why did anyone keep listening to this guy? Yeah, exactly. Right? Uh, because, like, why because is he were, not already dead? Because they were scared of it. Oh. And you know, I mean, him him trying to control the crew with toughness really it just essentially alienated more people. And uh, you know, basically everyone was left to fend for themselves, trying to avoid his anger. And then only like two or three weeks after the accident, some of the survivors began whispering about that great taboo subject, mutiny. But the crew knew that how many weeks? Like three weeks. Bro. And he should have been the leader, but they were this like, should have been yeah. like day two, <laughs> day one mutiny. But but they knew that if they if he heard about them talking mutiny, he knew what they would do to See, them. See, but if they'd have done it hour one, but he has a, there he, wouldn't be he any has mutiny. His own He'd have been like though. out on a freaking roof. He yeah. has his own thug supporters the, that are part the of Marines, his group. The twenty five Marines, twenty Marines, five hundred. In, in total, I don't know how many Marines were there on this ship, but okay. basically, yeah. Well, and, you know, quite a few. So they knew that if they actually mutinied, there was a huge risk that uh, they would be killed, basically. Okay, sure, but um, they're going to either well, be whipped to death so or die of So what scurvy. they did is rather than confront him openly, they started to build these stories that would justify mutiny eventually. Uh, and Buckley, remember, he was the one that they, he, he was the gunner that everyone said was probably the most qualified person on the ship. He proposed that Cummins, who was the ship's carpenter, that this is what you were talking about before, that they take the longboat, they they lengthen the longboat and convert it into a schooner, which would accommodate more men. Genius, right? And they, they would make their way home via the Straits of Magellan to either Brazil or to the British West Indies. Or hell, to any other yeah. island. And then they would go home to England. With more resources. Well, they'd go to where people were. Just take it one at a time. Take, and, like, groups. And they, so they, they had the... Uh, 
they had the schooner. They had, well, they had the, they had their longboat, and then they also had a barge. They had like a smaller barge and a little cutter that would accompany the schooner, and uh, you know that would be they would they would use like the barge and the schooner to to go off to forage for food and, and supplies as they were going along the coastline to get back home. <laughs> well, you know, bulkly. I mean, he was he was skillful enough to to ha actually have this plan be successful, to have a reasonable fighting chance of success. And despite all the efforts to convince Cheap to go along with his plan, Captain Cheap would not agree with the plan. He preferred to head north and try to catch up with the with Anson's squadron. Oh, he, with what ship, dumbass? Well, well, he wanted to use the long ship you know, to, and what? convert it oh, to a schooner and then sail people? up to the rendezvous point. How many people? Point. Yeah. And what food? Exactly. And how many, how many sailors? Now. There was, there was, you know, full mutiny eventually did occur. Yeah, but, no shit. But full mutiny, <laughs> could, like, it, it, like, uh, it likely wouldn't have happened if Cheap had, if Captain Cheap had agreed to Bulkley's escape plan. And he, Bulkley had the confidence of most of the men, not all of them, but most of them. But Cheap, you know, he had his own problems to worry about. He was in, he was in a very interesting maritime law predicament. Sure. Because he was the captain, the acting captain of a ship that was shipwrecked, he's automatically subject to a court martial. And he could be thrown out of the Navy to lifelong poverty and isolation at best. That's the best thing that could happen to a shipwrecked captain. And at worst, he could be, he could be found guilty of cowardice and executed by firing squad. Oh. So he's got to protect his own ass. I was going to say he could be a snack. So, he, yeah, he wanted to go north and rendezvous with the... with with Commodore Anson and the ships so that he could get back in the fight. He could get back and say, I overcome all, I overcame all of these obstacles. I persevered. I got back on mission. I stayed on mission and, and we were successful. His warrant officers, they, they warned him against some of the actions he took, which kind of would reflect badly on him as, as the captain, when the Admiralty investigated the loss of the wager. And the final thing we will, we'll end this here, but, Tensions are increasing, and this is only three weeks after the accident. Only three All weeks? of this shit, including cannibalism, has happened in the first three weeks of okay. this shipwreck. But here's the remarkable thing, yeah. that cannibalism was somehow more acceptable than mutiny. Yes. That blows my mind. <laughs> like, at what point do you say, okay, instead of resorting to cannibalism, let's question our leadership here for a second. He's sitting on board, or he and his pals are sitting on board eating biscuits, rock hard biscuits with sardines, dried out sardines. We're sitting here eating celery, clams, and what else? Well, he wasn't on board the ship. He just wasn't letting the other people have the ship. Sure, supplies. but they can't have the ship. But spoiler alert, he has the supplies later. Shocker. Yeah. <laughs> so we have you and I. Yeah. Okay. We're the yeah. we're the people who are gonna mutiny. We have Can't celery. Says, Danny, take your meds, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> we have celery. <laughs> Meds are we? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Celery, yeah. clams, and what? Seaweed. Seaweed. That's all we've got. Pretty much. And we're sitting there, and we're like, you know what? Let's eat some people instead of well, asking some questions. I mean, I know you're not going to pay attention to next week's maritime. Matter, I'm, when we do I'm part not, two of this, I'm not. Spoiler I'm not alert: this there one, was man. actually a group of natives that came down. Uh, you know, they, they'd watch them, they came down and they offered to show them where they could get seafood, where they could do these things and how they could survive. Okay. Uh, but Captain Cheap and his men basically treated them like shit, raped Shot. the women, uh, took oh. advantage of them. And the natives said, fuck this shit, we're out. And yeah. They, and they just and they walked survived. off. They just walked off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So you that, know what, you guys, you guys, two lessons to learn from this. F this shit, I'm out. And I ain't nobody's biatch. Yeah, if a, you just I started those imagining two Danny lessons, as a parrot on Jeff's shoulder, it's great. <laughs> if you just learn those two lessons, yeah. you will survive. That is the rules you need to survive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so anyway. Jesus. Tension, this is where we're going to leave you today. Tensions are increasing. No shit. It's only been three weeks since the accident. Three weeks. <laughs> and, <laughs> and one night, Captain, acting Captain Cheap. Here's an altercation outside of his tent. It has nothing to do with him. He just hears people fighting outside of his tent. He goes out of his tent in a rage, and he he basically intervened between a drunken midshipman named Henry Cozens and the ship's purser. And without warning, Cheap ends up 
firing his pistol at Cozens. Why? And he missed the first time because he's just a raging Scotsman. So they're raping natives. Yeah. They tried to help. But that, that's next week. Um, so anyway, he he hears this altercation. He walks out. He sees Cozen and the purser shooting and fighting, and he just shoots at Cozen without warning for no particular reason. Well, he ends up missing. Um, you know, he, he then decides he's going to shoot at Cozen's again, and this time he shot him in the face at point blank range. Just point blank shot him in the face uh, without any warning. Why? And, of course, this incident raised tensions further. Oh, no. <laughs> duh. And dude did not serve. He did not die from being shot in the face point blank by Captain Cheap. He survived being shot in the face point blank. And Cheap refused to allow anyone to give him medical assistance. What? And Cozen, who had been shot in the face at point blank range, took 10 days to die from his wound. That is evil. That is certifiable. And, I mean, everything else to this point is evil, but that's pretty evil. And uh, this added it's, another it's corpse fickable. to the number of dead who began okay, to right, litter the I'm island. Out, I'm no, out. I'm this, out. No, the, 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 the candle wasn't the, 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 so, the, but Anyway, the, the, so that's just the, another okay. dead body. So All what right. we've got is at the end of six weeks, 40 of the 140 survivors have died. In, in just the space of six weeks, 40 of the 140 have died. There's only 100 men from the original 250 alive at this point. Is it wrong? I'm still impressed that there's 100 still alive. Nope. I'm really shocked. And, I mean, John Byron, you know, the, the grandfather of Lord Byron, he had actually tamed a wild dog, and his shipmates ended up eating the dog for food. And they were starving so much that weeks later, Byron found the dog's rotting paws and ended up eating the dog's rotten paws because he was starving. Could have ate that in the first place. That's me. That's and food. that's when that the Patagonian natives arrived. And that's where we're going to end part we're one. We're ending that story. Jeez, Jeff. That's where we're going to end part one. For all those who made it this far, I'm sorry. I was not intending to be a part of any of this. I told Jeff I was going to come visit him in Busan. We're going to have a good time. I'll hop on stream. I'll say hi to everybody. I was not planning on the cannibalism. Yeah. Well, now, and that see, was not expected. And, and like part two, we should be able to wrap most of this up in part two. Or um, the senior kidnapping. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, <laughs> part three, I don't know when or if part three will happen. But during all of this, like I said, I found out that they're making a movie starring uh, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio, probably as Captain Reach, uh, and being directed by Martin Scorsese. It's supposed to come out in 2024, uh, so called The Wager. But also, I, there's a. it's based on a book by David Grant called The Wager, A Tale of Shipwreck, Mutiny, and Murder. Uh, which I'm listening to now because it's absolutely fascinating the amount of research that, that uh, the author put into the book. And I'm going to try to have the author on here for a part three. Shut up. I'm, I'm, Do you have his contact? No, I'm, I'm working on getting his contact. I don't know who this person is. It's, it's yeah, he. it's a he. Yeah. I'm, I'm working on getting his contacts because I would love to have him on here to talk about this. So that's, uh, that's, where, we've, that's where we're going to end just before the natives come and try to help. Never a good Never a good time. Never a good time. Natives <laughs> coming to help a bunch of people who show up on your shores. I don't recommend it. And to this day, old people still love their cruises. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. You're sick. Oh, Spot no. that you're sick. That's uh, bad. All right. I just <laughs> wow. Hey. Hi, oh, Strawberry. She Strawberry. wants my attention. Sorry. Straw wants to be on camera. There. There you go, baby. There I can you go. My attention. There you go. Uh, don't tell Danny about Shackleton. Shackleton was a, that was an amazing story. Shackleton's story is amazing. Guy is shipwrecked for damn near twenty four months on an ice floe in Antarctica. The the journey he went through and didn't lose a single man was I mean epic. Uh, but anywho, that's the end of part one. 
of the wager. Like I said, I thought this would be a very short stream when I first had the idea to do this a couple of weeks ago. And the more I started looking into this, and there's there's no, I don't know why nobody's done an in-depth YouTube video on this. I'm probably going to have to chop this up into some sort of video, uh, like standalone video for, for YouTube, because there's no videos about this out there. And the more I got into this, the more it, it leads you down these this rabbit hole and you start learning more about it. Because, I mean, Lord Byron's grandfather, you know, the Byron ship, he was an avid writer. And there was another guy who was an avid journalist who wrote things. Then you've got the ship's logs. and it, just this thing expanded into something I knew that I couldn't handle in one show two most likely. And if I can get the author on that would just, that would just make my day. So it's at least two. There's a possibility of a third out there if the stars align, but that's what we're looking at. Um, Strawberry. Thank you for being here. Danny on direct visiting Korea, visiting here in Busan popped in for just a quick visit. I just and came to talk about eating live octopus and here we are. <laughs> And and kudos to Mr. On for for just remaining silent there and wondering when the hell this is going to end. Best husband uh, in the world. It was really, ask for better. She would like hang out for about twenty minutes and leave. That was yeah. The, that was that our was plan. plan. We were going to come over, eat some fried chicken, maybe have a few drinks, and then drinks led to some cigars. Cigars led to hey, let's do a stream. I said all right, and then here we are and that talking led to about kidnapping seniors and cannibalizing and, yeah. people. You know. <laughs> So, um, anyway, for those of you that Sarcasm don't know Danny on, Danny on Direct is her channel. You ab If you're not subscribed to her, you absolutely need to get over to Danny on, A-H-N, Danny on Direct, and subscribe to her channel. Give her all the likes. She is the Lafrodite of YouTube. She'll give you She'll give you blessings. She'll give you anti-cannibalism blessings. Yes, uh, I will. Yeah. Or curses. I give curses, and those are really underrated. You know, it's like five bucks, you get to curse someone with you know, third degree hemorrhoids for the next six months. And Silent Pia says, thanks for joining us, Danny and Mr. On for sharing. Looking forward to more. Aww. Aww. I hope you guys had a good time. I'm sorry I interrupted a lot. I'm the, super WTF, engaged. you made him just sit there. No, that's what he that's what he wants to do. He, he wants nothing he, to do with his on-camera stuff. He, no, he hates being on camera. He just supports me and he's an amazing husband. So, yeah. Why don't cannibals eat clowns? Because they taste funny. <sighs> I've heard that yeah, one. I haven't, but I wish I hadn't. <laughs> I wish that for you too, Jeff. Uh, I am subscribed, but there is a serious lack of cannibalism. Uh, yeah. We'll talk more about cannibalism. You'll talk week. about cannibalism a lot yeah. next when, time. When, when Danny's not here. I promise. Actually, I don't think I've watched a show of yours on Maritime Monday where you don't discuss cannibalism. Maybe twice. I think I've seen two we've, episodes. We've only had we've only had four or five cannibalism Look stories. Look at your ear, it just flips. Finite SA says it went longer than expected. It involved Jeff. I'm shocked. <laughs> Safe journeys home, Danny. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'll see you guys next week back mm. in the states. Otherwise, I will be streaming on my own once I have some capacity to stream. I don't have a lot of um, what's the word? Internet where I am. And so when I'm traveling, like in Pusan or in Tongyong tomorrow, maybe, uh, then I have a lot of internet. But otherwise, I just don't have the, the streaming capacity. Kaiser Pineapple says, it, it's been a good day. Thanks, La Rax and La Fredite for the excellent way to start my week. Y'all are awesome. We send you love from Korea. Well, Danny, uh, tell us what you got to tell us before you, you guys need to leave. Go and subscribe to my channel, you guys. It is woefully unsubscribed to, as I have heard. Uh, it's one of the best law streams on the planet. As a matter of fact, I will be quitting my job here soon and just doing this full time. Wow. Uh, unlike Jeff, who is an excellent, excellent uh, maritime lawyer, I do primarily family law right now, but I am a civil attorney who does everything from contract disputes uh, to <clears throat> assaults and battery and whatnot, civil disputes, stuff that just lands right outside of the criminal stuff. So if you want really interesting legal analysis from someone who looks at everything from the cookie wars to um, NDA disputes, come and check out my stream. I think you guys will really enjoy it. Danny on direct. I'll put the link down here in the description in a little bit. Uh, and, and again, folks, Danny on direct. One of my dear, 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 sweet friends, her and Mr. Honor, two of the best people you'll ever know in your entire life. So if you ever get the chance to, to hang out IRL, do Come it. Come do it.
you know, here in Utah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, and we'll, we'll when when I show up in Utah next summer, we'll do another uh, we'll do another meetup or two like we did last summer and whatnot. We'll we'll hang out. You got to come and hang out with with Danny on direct and Mister On if he's there. He comes to some, he doesn't come to others. It's up to him. Uh, right, well, what we've got coming up for me. Tomorrow is going to be YNW Melly. We got some big updates that happened at the hearing today. We'll cover those. Uh, sp- there's been some spoilers here in chat. We'll deal with those later tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, we're probably going to hopefully have a Murdoch trial update, and we'll be doing Mer- not Maritime Monday. OJ Simpson, the final, the final version of the final episode of Andrea Mazzoler on the stand. Friday, pff, I don't know. What we'll do we'll probably just a chill stream. That's what we're going to be doing for this week. So uh, we're going to send you over to Megan Fox right now, who Ooh, Megan has, Fox is up. Who has scored and is in the middle of an amazing interview with Maya Kowalski's attorney, Greg Anderson. Oh, get it, Megan. That she, is amazing. She's interviewing him right now as we speak. So we're going to send you all over there. If uh, You should get routed over there automatically. If you don't, there's going to be a little blue thing up there at the top of the chat that says, hey, Megan Fox is doing something. Go find out what it is. If that doesn't work, just go over there and find it on your own. Danny, thank you for being here. You rock. Thank you so much for having me. Mr. On, thank you for allowing her to to hang out here with us, and thank you for putting up with our shenanigans. Uh, We will see you all tomorrow. Aye, aye, Captain. Cheers, and... Me reminding you, whatever you do, whoever you do it with, however many times you do it, however good it feels, and why ever you're doing it in the first place, just make sure you always enjoy those legal vices. How dare you!